Russell slowly worked through the dump, scattering trash around with a stick. His practiced gaze immediately identified treasures amidst the clutter. Russell could even estimate the value of these treasures. A metallic pipe hollow but heavy. A beam of unknown origin. If he bundled all these findings and took them to the scrap metal collection point, he could make a decent profit. Russell was pleased with his discoveries. Luck was on his side that day as he dragged each find one by one towards his car. It was the end of July. Russell paused, surveying the dump. Perhaps he could search for more, hide his findings in a secluded spot, and come back for them later. Some inexplicable instinct pulled him back. Russell would later call it fate. He took the stick again, used for rummaging through garbage, and set out on another search. However, his luck had run out. All he found were rags, rotting waste, and something of indeterminate nature. Finally, as dusk settled in, Russell reached into a bag of potato peels, and his patience snapped. It was time to go home. He wouldn't find anything else tonight. Russell turned to head towards his car when he heard a faint moan or squeak from somewhere. He turned his head in surprise, but saw no one. A rat, perhaps. Russell took a step to the side and listened. Nothing. No movement. Something white appeared from under a piece of plywood. Russell looked closer and nervously swallowed. A hand. A real woman's hand, withering on the finger. Russell stood there, unsure of what to do. His mind told him to run as fast as he could. I didn't see anything. Russell told himself. It's just my imagination. A visual trick. The moan repeated. Russell wanted to lift the plywood but hesitated. Long learned rules flashed through his mind. Don't leave fingerprints in suspicious places. Don't get involved in unclear situations. Live quietly and peacefully. Stay under the radar like an ancient old man. If he lifted the plywood now, he would break all the rules with no turning back. He needed to call the police, but Russell was reluctant to involve himself with them. With my background, he thought, I'll be accused of murder. But wait, what murder? The girl under the plywood was still alive. Russell lifted the plywood carefully and moved it aside. Then, he stared in amazement at his discovery. A woman in her mid-thirties, with disheveled light hair, dressed elegantly for such a place. In a long burgundy evening gown, no shoes on her feet, Russell couldn't take his eyes off her face. Alexa. He whispered in astonishment. The woman didn't reply. She was unconscious. Russell looked at her, thinking it was all an optical illusion, then shook her shoulders. Alexa, wake up. What's wrong with you? She groaned again, and Russell released her shoulders, recoiling. Only now, getting closer, he noticed dried blood on her head. It seemed she was severely injured. Alexa opened her eyes slightly and looked at him. There was emptiness in her eyes. It seemed she didn't understand what was happening. Russell waited, afraid of what she might say, whether she recognized him or not. A second before Russell decided to take Alexa to the hospital and leave her there, she whispered, Don't leave me. What's the rush? Grumbled Hugh when his friend, pulling him out of bed, drove him home. I just finished my shift. Couldn't your business wait until morning? It couldn't replied Russell. Life and death matter, almost. The serious tone in Russell's voice convinced Hugh that something was seriously wrong. Sleepiness left him. Is it something with Sue? He asked. Did you two have a fight? Did you neighbors flood? I don't know. I don't have any other options. I need a doctor, Russell replied, looking at the road. A doctor? What's that got to do with me? You should have gone to the hospital. I did. You work at the hospital, Hugh snorted. You know what I mean. Russell remained silent on the way home. One thought dominated his mind. Just to make it in time. Without turning off the engine, he jumped out of the car and rushed to the porch. Why are you sitting there? Come here, he shouted. Hugh followed. You dragged me into this story. I would be fast asleep by now. Crossing the threshold, Hugh stopped grumbling. 
He was speechless. Help! Russell yelled. Why are you standing there? Come on. Hugh approached, not taking his eyes off the woman lying on the couch. A blonde in a beautiful, albeit dirty, dress, surrounded by old faded wallpaper on the walls, old furniture, and dirty dishes on the table. In such an environment, the blonde looked ridiculous and out of place. Who is she? Hugh asked and noticed blood on the woman's head. What did you do to her? Why would I? There's no one else here. So, you think I almost killed her? You're a true friend. Russell anxiously grabbed the woman's wrist and breathed a sigh of relief. She has a pulse. It was too early to relax. The blonde woman was breathing strangely, as if she had a cold, and her forehead was warm. Do something already. Russell shouted. Why do you think I called you? The best I can do is call an ambulance. Should I? No need. Why? Hugh was surprised. Isn't that the most logical thing in our case? They can help her. If it wasn't you who hit her, why not do what's best for everyone? Alexa asked not to leave her, explained Russell. Alexa, the one. Hugh was astonished. Wait, so she talked to you. That's all she said. Help her already. Don't waste time. Hugh leaned over the woman and examined her wound. We need an x-ray, a neurologist, a surgeon. Hugh sighed and said, all right. Do you have a first aid kit at least? There was something, nodded Russell. Hugh treated the wound and bandaged it. Alexa occasionally moaned but didn't regain consciousness. What if she has a concussion or something worse? Hugh asked. How can you even listen to what a person in this condition is asking for? We should have called an ambulance. And that's it. But do you think she'll survive? Russell asked. I hope so. At least because if she dies, you'll have problems. Russell took Alexa's hand. His fiance, Sue, used some creams. But her hands were not like this. Where did you find her? Hugh asked. You won't believe it. In the dump. That's hard to believe. Was she already in this condition? Yes. I brought her here immediately. Threw away all the metal. I don't know what happened. Alexa has always been so kind. How could this happen to her? Kind. Hugh smirked. I recall your stories and can't agree with that. All right. Maybe she wasn't always an angel. But she certainly didn't deserve this. The men were silent for a while. Looking at her. And then Russell spoke. Thank you. You can go home now. We don't need anything else. You may not need it, but she might. Replied Hugh. I'll probably take a nap on your bed. And you keep watch. Wake me up around three. And I'll take over. It would have been better if you had called the doctors. Russell didn't say anything. He kept his eyes on Alexa's face. Wondering how fate had orchestrated their meeting. And most importantly... Why? The night seemed like an eternity to Russell. In the light of the table lamp, he stared at Alexa. Her face seemed horribly pale. Russell listened to her breathing, occasionally checking her pulse, and they told him that things were bad. But Russell didn't know how to help Alexa. Maybe Hugh was right, and they should call the doctors. But Alexa asked not to leave her. Although, did she understand there on the dump whom she was addressing? At three o'clock, as promised, Hugh took over the watch. Go to sleep. He said, it's my turn to keep watch. I'll sit for a while, Russell replied. Don't interfere. Your tongue is already getting tied. Go get some sleep. And no arguments. As if I've never done a night shift before, Russell said. Hugh sat on a chair, gazing thoughtfully at Alexa, and said, what's wrong with you, huh? Why are there always only problems with you? The sun flooded the room, making every object in it shine and beautiful. But for Alexa, looking at this radiance only intensified the pain in her head. She squinted, but it wasn't enough. A sunbeam fell directly on Alexa's face. She wanted to close her eyes with her palm, but performing this action proved impossible. Alexa tried to move her hand, but it helplessly fell off the bed. The sound of breaking glass echoed. Russell, she woke up, 
A stranger man shouted. From some way in the distance, footsteps were heard. Now Alexa wanted not only to close her eyes, but also to cover her ears. The noise was splitting her head. Please, be quieter. She wished she could say, but instead, an unintelligible whisper escaped her lips. Alexa. A man grabbed her hand and squeezed it so hard it hurt. Did you say something? His voice seemed familiar to Alexa. But where from? Among her friends and relatives, there was definitely no one like that. Yet, Alexa could swear that she had heard him not for the first time. Let her go, grumbled a second voice, then addressed her. Alexa, can you speak? How do you feel? How did she feel? Awful. The sensation Alexa experienced could be compared to the worst flu after intense workouts at the gym. Everything hurt. Muscles. Head. Abdomen. Bad. She whispered. How's your head? The man continued to ask. Can you look at us? Turn off the light. Alexa requested. For a few seconds, the men remained silent, as if contemplating her request. And then footsteps were heard again. Judging by the sound, someone abruptly pulled the curtains. Alexa opened her eyes. Two faces loomed over her, looking at her as if she were some curiosity. The first man was definitely unfamiliar to her. Alexa wouldn't forget him because an ugly scar crossed his right cheek. However, his dark eyes looked kind, so there was no need to fear him. But the second one made Alexa want to scream with just his guys. Not because the man was waving a knife or anything like that. It was just that Alexa realized why his voice seemed familiar. Not only the voice, but also those blue eyes and the nose with a little bump. And the way he bites his lip in moments of excitement. Like now, Russell. Alexa whispered, not believing her eyes. He nodded awkwardly. Hello. How are you feeling? Where am I? Where did you come from? Alexa tried to sit up, but it was impossible. She had absolutely no strength. What happened to me? Alexa asked her main question. I don't know. Russell replied. Honestly, I don't know. I found you like this. Like what? Well, with a head wound. A wound. Alexa could barely recall events from the previous day, but her head was indeed throbbing. It seemed like she was at a party. And then, the further events disappeared into a haze. I don't remember anything. She complained. Nothing at all. The second man asked anxiously. Not your address or last name. I remember that. Alexa said. The men breathed a sigh of relief. As if they had expected the worst. Where am I? Alexa asked again. At my place. Russell replied. At home. So, on Tampa Street. Look. She even remembers that. The second man said in surprise. Seems like your case isn't hopeless. Russell hesitated for a moment, then spoke. No, not on Tampa Street. I haven't lived there for a long time. A whole bunch of questions suddenly popped into Alexa's mind. How long? Why? What had happened to him in the last 10 years? Alexa doubted she had the strength for more than one or two questions. And if that's the case, it might be worth spending them on something more important. Where am I? She repeated. In the suburbs. The second man said. In the suburbs. It sounded so vague. In the suburbs of which city? Alexa wouldn't be too surprised if they told her she had been taken to the other end of the country. Watch my fingers. The man with the scar said, bringing his index finger to her nose. Alexa understood that this was a routine medical procedure and still felt ridiculously foolish moving her eyes left and right. Are you a doctor? She asked when the man finished and froze with a serious look. The stranger ignored this question. Russell asked anxiously. Well, reflexes seem to be intact. Or should I check again? The answer wasn't too encouraging. It seemed like there was no professionalism here. Alexa's interlocutors spoke to her in hushed tones, as if conversing in a secret language. She already realized that she wouldn't get an exact answer to which street, or at least which town she was in. But at least she could understand that she wasn't in a hospital. The surroundings indicated the poverty of her host. No hospital sterility. An untidy table clittered with dirty dishes and cups. 
a colorful curtain on the window. Do you live here? Alexa asked. Yeah. Russell nodded, and again, that embarrassed look. How Alexa missed it. I like it. It's beautiful. She said, flattering him. Not wanting to be rude at all, a high society girl. The doctor snorted. You'd honestly say you've never seen such a dump. Alexa felt like she was blushing. However, it was hard to say for sure. Her whole body burned as if it were being slowly heated on a low fire. The stranger with the scar touched her forehead and said, She has a high temperature. Hugh looked intently at his patient. Do you want to go to a real hospital? Honestly, Alexa didn't know what to say. She didn't fully grasp what had happened to her and where she ended up. But the thought of leaving her only acquaintance and going to a clinic with indifferent doctors shook her. I probably don't want to, she said, probably. A typical female answer, sighed the scar-faced man. Well, then, who should we inform about where you are? Do you remember the phone number of any of your relatives? This question turned out to be much easier. Alexa mentally went through the short list of her relatives, consisting of one person, and said, No need to inform anyone. If possible, I'd like to stay here. After these words, Alexa felt a slight dizziness. So, you want to hop on Russell's shoulders? The doctor clarified. Although, no, a small correction. On both of us, Alexa remained silent. If she could sink through the ground, she would certainly do it. Just to avoid seeing that accusing look and not to witness Russell's reaction. I wonder how he'll react to such an answer. Will he say that he's not her nanny after all these years and everything that happened between them? I can handle it myself, Russell said. We don't need you anymore. You'll handle it. The doctor suddenly flared up. Look at this optimist. Do you think if she opened her eyes, everything is fine? Maybe she'll never open them again. Nothing is clear here. Russell nudged his friend in the shoulder. Think before you speak. Alexa lay there, stunned by what she heard. She'll close her eyes and may never open them again. Does that mean I could die? She asked quietly. The men stared at her. Russell angrily said, pay no attention to him. He's just joking. His humor is peculiar. Why should we lie? Hugh retorted, addressing Alexa. I won't hide it from you. The situation is very serious. You may not die, but it's better to be under the observation of doctors to prevent complications. But aren't you a doctor? The man chose not to respond, and Alexa understood why. Why bother his with her outside of working hours? He could dedicate his time to his own affairs and family. I'll pay you. She made one last attempt to persuade him. I'll pay you whatever you say when I get home. So, you refuse to leave, sighed the man. Well, okay then. My name is Hugh. I can't say or I'm glad to meet you. Sorry, she nodded in response. I'm Alexa. Pleased to meet you. A similar dialogue had already occurred in her life many years ago when Alexa was a child. She was around 9 or 10 years old, and the housemaid Meredith introduced her to a stern woman of indeterminate age with glasses and small curls on her head. Meet Alexa. This is your governess, Mrs. Jones. Hello, Alexa said politely. The woman looked at her with an assessing gaze and nodded. In that moment, Alexa realized that Mrs. Jones had a character as solid as a rock. And where's dad? Alexa asked the housemaid. Mr. Helson left for work early in the morning, Meredith said, inexplicably adjusting the bow on the girl's braid. It seemed she felt as uncomfortable as Alexa. An awkward silence filled the room. Mrs. Jones broke it first. Thank you, she said to the housemaid. We'll get acquainted on our own from here. You can go. Alexa made a pleading face and with her eyes asked Meredith to stay but she shrugged and went to the kitchen. The girl was left alone with the mysterious governess. Where can we talk? Mrs. Jones asked, looking around the room. Alexa didn't understand the question. Why couldn't they talk right here? Was she afraid that Meredith would eavesdrop on them? Alexa didn't want to let a stranger into her room. She feared that stern Mrs. 
Jones wouldn't approve of the scattered dolls everywhere. So, she pointed to the door and said, We can go to the garden. Well-bred girls don't point fingers. What? Said Alexa. Instead of answering, Mrs. Jones slapped her on the hand and worked onto the street. Alexa wanted to get acquainted with the governess less and less. Alexa stepped out of the house. Uncertain about what was allowed and what wasn't. She said to Mrs. Jones, let's go behind the house. There are swings and a bench there. It's nice. Alexa didn't want to lead Mrs. Jones to that place either. But it was better than showing her bedroom. They circled the house. And Mrs. Jones sat on the bench. Folding her arms on her knees. Alexa sat on the swing and regretted it. What if the governor said that sitting on the swing in her presence was improper? Mrs. Jones looked at her for a while and then asked, What do you do in your free time? Alexa stared at her in amazement. The girl expected questions about her grades, favorite subjects at school, serious matters that adults often inquire about. The question about free time caught her off guard. Should she talk about dolls? What if Mrs. Jones said it's for little kids? What about her interest in football? No, that's too boyish. What are your hobbies? Mrs. Jones said, apparently considering Alexa utterly foolish. The girl decided to say something completely innocuous, something no one could criticize. I, I love watching cartoons. She said, I also go to the zoo or the movies with dad or Meredith. To be honest, she had only been to the movies with her dad once. She heard the words, Mr. Jones is at work more often than she actually saw him. So, he didn't have time for movies and other entertainments. But Mrs. Jones didn't need to know that either. The governess frowned, but she didn't comment on her answer. It seemed she was disappointed. Okay, I understand you, Mrs. Jones said. So, what are we going to do today? Where should we go? Go. Alexa asked in surprise. Don't governesses usually teach instead of going for a work? Do you want to study? No. But it's very strange. Alexa said. We will study, of course, but later, Mrs. Jones said. Today, we'll just chat. Today is our introduction day. For the first time, Alexa saw a smile on her face. It seemed her new governess was a person, not a robot. As the girl initially thought, that work didn't go very well. Later, Alexa realized that she wasn't very good at getting to know people. The same thing was happening now. She knew she didn't like Hugh, but couldn't figure out why. Do you have an appetite? He asked after examining Alexa's wound and rebandaging her head. No. Well, that's good. I'm still not sure if it's safe for you to eat now. Alexa glanced at Russell. This doctor surprised her more and more. She wanted answers, but her old acquaintance was thinking about something else at that moment. We should change your clothes, he said uncertainly. Change? Alexa asked. Until Russell mentioned it, she hadn't realized what she was wearing. Of course, normal patients don't lie in evening dresses. Alexa also remembered that the dress wasn't ankle length. And these two geniuses didn't even offer her a blanket. She tried to scorch Russell with her eyes, but he didn't understand anything. Why are you looking at me like that? He asked. She's thrilled with your offer. Hugh muttered. Thinks you're going to change her. Hugh stood up, looked at his friend, then at Alexa, and sighed. You've given me a weekend. Nothing to say. He left the house. And Alexa ordered Russell, bring me a blanket immediately. He smiled right away. The blanket Russell brought turned out to be soft, very warm, and it even had a faint tobacco smell. Do you smoke in bed? Alexa asked. Well, sometimes. Yes, that's dangerous. You could start a fire. Doesn't your wife say anything about it? Russell looked around and asked, where do you see a wife? Indeed. There was no one else in the room, except for some photo hanging on the wall. It seemed to depict a couple. Russell sighed and added, If this is a clever way to find out if I'm married, then no, I'm not married. I don't care, Alexa said, pulling the blanket up to her chin. In reality, 
She felt relieved that Russell didn't have a wife, although she couldn't explain why. At first, Alexa pretended to be asleep, but then drowsiness overcame her for real. Russell continued to move around, rearranging things on the table, sighing, and clicking a lighter. Another habit from past years. Alexa had forgotten about it. Don't you need to go to work? She asked without opening her eyes. I have the day off today. You said you found me. Where exactly? At the dump. Russell replied. Where? Alexa opened her eyes. At the dump. But how did I end up there? I have no idea. You need to ask yourself. Do you remember anything at all? I remember being at a party outside the city. We have a small house there. We were celebrating Mason's birthday. He's my husband, Russell said. I know his name. Go on. Knowing this was unexpected for Alexa. She herself had severed all ties with Russell. Not keeping track of him on social media or asking acquaintances about him. It turns out Russell was more curious about her. Did it mean something to him? At some point, I went outside to gather my thoughts, get some fresh air, and I went into the garden, and someone hit me on the head. It hurt a lot. I woke up here. Gather your thoughts, Russell repeated. What did you need to think about? Alexa didn't have time to answer and was glad about that. Their conversation was interrupted by the guests entering the room. One of them was Hugh, the strangest doctor she had ever met. The second was a woman of indefinite age and ample proportions in a colorful dress with a scarf on her head. Hello, the woman said, scanning the room. Good day, Alexa replied uncertainly. Meet, said Hugh, Mrs. Gooding, your caregiver, Mrs. Gooding. Russell asked again, has she ever worked as a caregiver? She's your neighbor, neighbor. The woman chuckled. Speak the truth. She sorts out rotten onions and potatoes in the store. And in the evenings, she washes the floors at the school, scraping off chewing gum. I didn't mean that, Russell said. It's just that you don't have medical education and... The woman burst into laughter as if he had said something funny. She leaned over Alexa and extended her hand. Nice to meet you. What's your name, Alexa? Good name. I have a niece with the same name, Mrs. Gooding extended her large hand for a handshake. And when Alexa offered her hand in return, she gasped in dismay. What's this on the girl? Savages. A dress. I see it's a dress. Made of synthetics and sequins. She must be itching all over. The fabric is worthless. Alexa swallowed the insult aimed at her beloved dress from a fashionable store. Surprisingly, she felt a certain sympathy for this woman. It seemed that despite her outward rudeness, Mrs. Gooding genuinely cared for her. Do you have any clothes? Pajamas or a nightgown? The caregiver asked Alexa. There's nothing here. And you? Mrs. Gooding looked at the men. Strange question. Hugh smirked. Russell, can you find something with lace? I can find a longer t-shirt. Or a shirt. Is that okay? Mrs. Gooding nodded. Bring it. But make sure it's cotton. Russell hurried to another room. And Mrs. Gooding told Alexa, I won't let anyone harm you. When Russell returned, he showed them a pile of clothes. Will this do? Mrs. Gooding scrutinized everything. Pulled out one t-shirt from the pile. And said, this one looks clean. Take the rest. Russell obediently left. Mrs. Gooding looked at Hugh and asked, What are you standing there for? I didn't get it. Do I need to take something to yourself? Are we supposed to change in front of you? Now he understood. Hugh glanced at Alexa and headed for the door. If anything, call for help. Mrs. Gooding helped Alexa change. Despite her stern voice, she handled the process delicately. When Alexa was dressed in Russell's old t-shirt and wrapped in a blanket again, Mrs. Gooding pointed to her head and asked, Who did this to you? Not them. No, not them. I haven't seen Russell for many years, and I just met Hugh. Better if you hadn't. Would have saved yourself some trouble. Alexa had a bunch of questions in her head that she wanted to ask before the men returned. 
she decided to start with what seemed the least threatening. What does Hugh do for a living? He works at the hospital. I understand he works at the hospital. Is he a neurologist? Surgeon, Mrs. Gooding stared at her as if Alexa had made an unsuccessful joke. A surgeon. You're close. What do you mean close? Alexa wondered. He works in the morgue. A pathologist. Examines the dead. Alexa looked at her for a moment, then burst into laughter. The laughter was more nervous than joyful. Where had she ended up? Understanding people had never been her strong suit from childhood. Even Mrs. Jones initially triggered dislike in her. The new governess was very demanding, finding fault with the girl over the slightest pretext. To earn approval or a smile from her required a great deal of effort. Once, lying in wait for her father, Alexa staged a scene. You don't love me, she declared, pouting in offense. Mr. Hilson looked at her in surprise. It was past midnight. The lights in the house were off, and his daughter, in a nightgown and one slipper, awaited him on the stairs. What are you doing here, Alexa? He asked. Why aren't you asleep, waiting for you? Why, to tell you that you don't love me, Alexa said, and tears of hurt welled up in her eyes. She felt that he didn't love her, that her father didn't listen to her, and was lost in his thoughts somewhere far away. I don't love you. Where did you get that idea? Whom else would I love if not you? You're always at your work, never with me. You haven't even introduced me to Mrs. Jones. She probably thinks you don't love me, so she's always grumbling. Ra, you mean the nanny, said Mr. Helson, governess. Alexa corrected. Anyway, she's mean and nasty, and I have to stay with her after school until evening while you keep working. Mean. Well, do you want us to hire someone else? Mr. Helson said. Perhaps he was indeed too tired if he couldn't understand what the problem was. However, Alexa didn't want to figure it out. Angry and stomping her foot, she ran to her room. Mr. Helson went after her. Alexa, don't cry, please. How about going to the circus this Sunday? What do you think? Alexa buried her face in the pillow and didn't reply. She was too upset with her father. He gently parted her head, attempting to reconcile, or maybe the theater. Where would you like to go? Just take a work with you, the girl requested. Like before, holding hands. Anywhere is fine. Mr. Helson was ready to agree to anything just to make her stop crying. He promised they would go wherever she wanted. He continued to stroke her head and mumbled something comforting. Gradually, Alexa calmed down and fell asleep, and her father went to his room to dial an unfamiliar number on the phone. He still had someone else to talk to and comfort. Women, Mr. Hilson thought, big or small, all the same. Throughout the following week, Alexa was in a cheerful mood. A smile never left her face, and even the stern Mrs. Jones couldn't spoil her mood. Remove your elbows from the table. The governess nagged. Alexa nodded and did as told. Although she barely understood what was being talked about, her thoughts were already in the park. Finally, Sunday arrived. Alexa loved lounging in bed until noon on weekends. But on this day, she got up at nine. It felt like something magical would happen that day. She would go to the park with her father and everything would be as it used to be. They would joke, laugh and have cocoa and dad would probably get coffee. Alexa anxiously looked out the window. It was raining outside. The day was entirely unsuitable for works. What if dad changed his mind? Dad never lies. Alexa whispered to the doll watching her from the bed. Unable to stay in her room any longer, she rushed out the door. Dad, are you up already? Alexa peeked into his room. He was already up and seemed to have been for a while judging by the fact that the housekeeper had managed to make the bed. Maybe he's in the kitchen. Alexa ran there and realized she was too late. Meredith was already washing dishes and wiping the table. Dad did deceive her. He left, although he promised that everything would be different. Alexa, hi, you're up early today. Usually, on Sundays, you can't be woken up, 
Meredith smiled. Dad left. Alexa asked. Yes, about 15 minutes ago. Said something urgent happened at work. An emergency. Emergency. Alexa repeated. She felt like she was starting to hate those words, which she heard every day. The words or her own father. The girl couldn't say for sure. Meredith finally sensed that something was wrong and looked at the girl with concern. What's wrong? Did you want to tell something to your dad? I don't want to anymore. Alexa replied. He didn't want to tell anything anyway. But, Mr. Hilson does this every morning to avoid waking you up. Meredith said with confusion. How foolish and mean all these adults were. Alexa wanted to shout at all of them together. What's the use? They wouldn't understand anything anyway. Dad promised that he wouldn't work today. We were supposed to go for a work in the park. Alexa said. For a work? Meredith asked. Fine. Alexa said. I'll go to my room. There's nothing else to do. Can't even go to the garden. Want me to make you cocoa? Alexa shook her head. The girl returned to her room, closed the door, and sat on the windowsill. The rain outside continued to pour with such force as if someone up there in the sky had decided to create a universal flood. Alexa wished it would actually happen. She would be here, Dad would be at work, and neither of them had boats. If he couldn't come back, they would never see each other again and discuss this unsuccessful day off. It would be better that way. She wouldn't have to look at her father's guilty face and feel that it was all a lie. He probably didn't want to go anywhere from the very beginning. She didn't want to do anything. And Alexa sat there, looking out the window. After a while, she saw a car pulling into the yard. It seemed to be Mrs. Jones. What could she possibly need here? She should have a day off. Did she come to ruin everything completely? Alexa jumped off the windowsill and paced around the room, not knowing where to hide. She needed to run, hide in her father's room or anywhere else, just not to encounter the governess. Rushing out of the room, she almost bumped into Mrs. Jones. There was an awkward silence in the corridor for a few moments. Then the governess asked, where are you in such a hurry? Alexa, hello, Mrs. Jones, the girl replied. Sorry, I was running to Meredith. I wanted to tell her what exactly she wanted. Alexa couldn't come up with, so she decided to change the subject. Why did you come? Forgot something here, right? Your dad called me, said he needs to go to work, and asked me to sit with you. I don't need anyone to sit with me, Alexa objected. I'm already big, and besides, I want to be alone. Mrs. Jones looked at her attentively and shook her head. No one wants to be alone, and you don't either. How you know? Alexa retorted. I certainly don't want to be with you. Today is a day off. Alexa had never been rude to adults, but this time she couldn't hold back. Her patience snapped, and she couldn't remain calm. To her surprise, the governess didn't react to this outburst. She didn't even flinch, just asked, maybe you want to go to your friends. I can take you wherever you say, no need to take me anywhere. Don't you have friends? I do. I just don't want to see anyone. I told you, Mrs. Jones sighed, why should I spend my day dealing with a spoiled child? I don't understand. Alexa was so stunned by her words that she didn't respond immediately. She expected anything, scolding, threats from Mrs. Jones to complain to her father, but not this. No one asked you to deal with me, Alexa muttered. You can go home and sit with your grandchildren. I won't be upset. If I had my way, I would have gone back. But if I stop dealing with you, there will be no one to return to. How so? Alexa asked. Well, not everyone is happy to stay home alone but they have no choice. And the grandmothers of these children have to work without days off. Deal with spoiled girls to earn money for their grandchildren's treatment. Mrs. Jones turned away from her and headed for the exit. Alexa hesitated for a moment but ran after her. Curiosity triumphed over resentment. Are your grandchildren sick? And what does it matter? 
Does anything concern you besides your own petty grievances? My grievances are not petty. My dad lied to me today. He said we would go for a work for the first time since June. But he, as usual, went to work and didn't even warn me. He sent you instead of him. It seems Alexa managed to surprise the governess. When Mrs. Jones looked at her, there was a new emotion in her guise. It seemed to be understanding. Sorry, I didn't know about that, Mrs. Jones said. I didn't know about your grandchildren either. You never told me about yourself. And now that I've told you, what's changed? I don't know. Alexa shrugged. But I'll go with you. Where? To your friends or to the park? To your grandchildren. Introduce me to them. It will be better for everyone. You'll be with your relatives. And I won't stay home. My grandchildren are not a toy. You know. The governess said. I know. Mrs. Jones looked at her for a while. Then sighed. I hope I won't regret this. Okay. Get ready and dress warmly. It's damp outside. Recalling that day. Alexa often wondered if Mrs. Jones regretted taking her in that day. Now lying on the couch in Russell's strange house, Alexa remembered how she saw him that day. Not the robust man, but the one worn out by endless drips and surgeries. A teenager, he was as pale as paper. Alexa had never met such pale people. Without thinking, she asked, Are you an albino? Perhaps that was the first time Mrs. Jones regretted their acquaintance. Alexa struggled to emerge from her drowsiness and looked at Russell. Judging by the darkness outside, a lot of time had passed since the caregiver left, and he was still sitting at the table. How long had Russell been in this position? Only the desk lamp was on. Russell was scribbling with a pencil on paper and didn't notice that the guest had woken up. Alexa watched him and compared him to the teenager in her memories that Russell had almost no muscles, his clothes hung, and he himself seemed somewhat transparent. This Russell, on the other hand, had broadened shoulders and become a real man. It's hard to believe that he could have died once. And if Russell had died, now I would be dead too. Alexa thought, who would have found me in the dump and brought me here, and who would take care of me? Are you tired? Alexa hoarsely asked, Go to sleep. Russell jumped and dropped the pencil. He looked at Alexa in surprise. I woke you up. How do you feel? Great. Like after a resort. Just missing a sun lounger and a heated pool. Sorry. I know my apartment is not super. It's okay. Alexa smiled. I was joking. Probably nowhere could be better for me right now than here. Besides, I chose this hospital room myself. Russell took a cup from the table and handed it to her. Do you want some water? That would be nice. Russell brought the cup to her mouth and helped her drink. Enough. Thank you. Even in the semi-darkness of the room, Alexa noticed shadows under his eyes. You need to sleep. Why are you sitting here? I'm watching. The caregiver will only come in the morning. Nothing will happen to me. And you need rest. Alexa said. Don't you have to go to work or somewhere else? Actually, I do, Russell said. But I wanted to take a day off. I don't trust Mrs. Gooding. She's somehow strict, Alexa suggested. Exactly. I'm afraid to leave you with her. Nothing will happen. I'm strict too, in case you've forgotten. I remember, Russell smiled. Alexa suddenly felt self-conscious and thanked the darkness in the room hoping Russell wouldn't notice the blush on her cheeks. Why was she behaving strangely, almost flirting with him? She hadn't intended to do anything like that. She just got caught up in memories. This was a conversation between two old friends. When we first met, I also thought your grandmother was intimidating, Alexa said. I couldn't understand how one could live with Mrs. Jones, but then I got used to it and even grew fond of her. People don't toughen up without a reason. You know that. Sometimes there's no other way to survive. The smile faded from Russell's face, and he nodded. I know, better than anyone. Feeling like she was stepping on dangerous ground, Alexa still asked, Tell me a bit about yourself. There's nothing to tell, 
And it's not interesting, it is interesting. Alexa insisted. You can start with something simple. For example, tell me what you were doing at the dump. Russell looked at her as if questioning whether she was serious or joking. Are you really interested? Of course, you didn't just go there for no reason. Right, not for no reason. Russell sighed. I went there to find sleeping beauties with broken heads. Very funny. Alexa frowned. Okay, sorry. I was collecting metal there. Satisfied, metal. Alexa asked. Why? To sell and get some money. Alexa felt embarrassed. She had portrayed herself as a rich fool. As if it wasn't already clear that Russell wasn't collecting junk for crafts or interior decoration. What's your job? She asked. Trying to change the subject. I work in an auto repair shop. I fix all sorts of cars. Russell grumbled. So, he was offended after all. Alexa stayed silent, not knowing what to say. Finally, Russell spoke up. Now it's my turn to ask questions. Well, start with something simple. Alexa requested, giving a weak smile. Why don't you want to let your husband know where you are and what happened to you? Alexa hesitated for a moment, contemplating whether to answer seriously or turn it into a joke. Eventually, she responded, I think Mason hit me. The husband's name was hard for her to utter. The whole phrase was, two, why did Russell have to bring it up? It was so cozy lying on the couch, reminiscing about her distant childhood and avoiding serious matters. Do you mean he tried to kill you? Alexa nodded. Back then, communicating with Russell had also been challenging. At least, when he first saw Alexa in his apartment, he wasn't too thrilled. Grandma, why did you bring her? He asked, looking at the guest. I don't know her. So what's the problem? Get acquainted, Mrs. Jones said. Russell grumpily introduced himself. Russell, Alexa, thinking that his hospitality duty was fulfilled, Russell turned to the television. Some football match was on the screen. Alexa paced nearby, feeling annoyed. Who did this rude guy think he was? Did he believe that being sick gave him the right to behave however he wanted? Mrs. Jones entered the room, placed a plate of pastries on the table, and inquired, how are you two getting along, as if it wasn't obvious. Alexa thought the governess was mocking her. We're getting along just great. She sarcastically replied. You could even say we've become best friends. Yeah. Russell confirmed without turning around. Mrs. Jones stared at the back of his head for a while, then spoke with an icy tone. Russell, look at your conversation partners, not the TV. When you're talking to someone, Alexa triumphed. It turned out that Mrs. Jones scolded not only her, but her own grandson too. There was justice in the world after all. Russell sighed and turned toward them. Now, what am I supposed to talk to her about? You're a man. Figure it out yourself. Mrs. Jones said, heading to the kitchen. The whistling sound of a boiling kettle could be heard. Russell looked irritatedly at Alexa. The girl decided to initiate the conversation herself. What illness do you have? I don't want to talk about it. Russell replied, fine. Then what are your interests? What can you be interested in when you are stuck at home all the time? I watch various TV shows. I look out the window. When I get tired of all that, I lie on the bed and stare at the ceiling. Is that really interesting to you? Very, mumbled Alexa. Actually, you could be more polite. I haven't done anything wrong to you. You showed up in someone else's apartment uninvited. Isn't that enough? Russell wondered, not uninvited. Mrs. Jones invited me. Well. I didn't. Russell turned away from her again and stared at the TV screen. Alexa glared at him angrily. Russell was two or three years older than her, which, in childhood, feels like an eternity. Usually, Alexa felt timid around boys like him. But now she was furious. Do you play football yourself? She asked. I know you don't now. But before, when you were healthy, of course, he replied, as a forward or a goalkeeper. Alexa inquired, look at you, using these words. 
Russell exclaimed sarcastically. The screen displayed intense emotions as his attention was fixed on the match. Maybe you just sat on the bench. She teased. What do you even understand? Russell finally turned to look at her. Alexa thought she could enhance the effect and said, Have you ever scored a goal after such a comment? Russell should have shout. However, he shook his head in surprise. And you were lecturing me about politeness. Button. Where do you even know all these words? Forward. Goal. Don't call me Button. The girl felt offended. How else should I call you when you are so tiny? Okay. Did you play football? Alexa nodded. Judging by Russell's expression, he thought he was being played. You're probably lying. Who would pick you with that height? Girls don't play at all, but they picked me. Alexa said. Can you imagine? To be honest. No. Alexa preferred not to mention that she played football with first graders. Her classmates and older kids never noticed her. If she was an authority for the younger ones, everyone else, including Russell, considered her a button. And how will you prove it? Russell asked. How can you prove it? Alexa replied. Hit you in the forehead with a sword, if you can. Easier said than done. Russell stood up, approached the bed, and rolled a ball from under it. Give it a try. He crossed his arms on his chest and looked mockingly at the girl. Apparently, he had no doubt that she would miss. Alexa was taken aback. What? Seriously? Aim at you? Why not? Can't handle it. Russell asked. No. But it's just rude. All right. I get it. You're not well-mannered. Grandma didn't raise you properly, did she? Neither with you, it seems. Alexa mumbled. She took the ball in her hands and was surprised at how dusty it was. Apparently, it hadn't been taken out from under the bed for many months. She walked to the other end of the room and placed the ball on the floor. She looked uncertainly at Russell. I really going to hit it? Haven't changed your mind? Russell nodded. Alexa mentally apologized to Mrs. Jones and hit the ball. Russell, it seemed, didn't believe until the last moment that she would actually do it. Or he thought that a girl football player was something out of fantasy. He didn't manage to catch the ball. It hit him right on the forehead. Russell looked shocked at the ball. His pale face turned red. In horror, Alexa pressed her palm to her mouth and whispered, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Russell looked at her and unexpectedly burst out laughing. So, you didn't mean to hit me, but you did. And if you had really tried, what then? Would you have demolished the whole house with that sword? The girl smiled uncertainly. I could demolish it if you want. It's not difficult for me. Russell shook his head. No need. I still have to live here for a while. He walked to the table, turned off the TV, and turned to Alexa. Now, let's try again. Try what? Alexa didn't understand. Play football. You hit, and I'll catch. We need to check if it was a fluke or not. Alexa shrugged and did as he commanded. Now Russell caught the ball. The second time as well, and after the third, a smile suddenly left Russell's face, and he sank onto the bed. That's enough for now. I need to rest. Russell said. Alexa stood by the door, looking at him guiltily. In the few minutes they played, the girl had managed to forget that Russell was sick. He seemed perfectly normal, alive, and cheerful. Now, Alexa wondered if she did the right thing by starting to play with him. What if he felt worse after the blow to the forehead? Mrs. Jones entered the room. Alexa flinched, expecting the governess to scold them for playing. But she only said, tea is ready. Russell, will you eat now or rest first? I'll rest, he said. Well, then, Alexa and I will sit in the kitchen for a while. Come, Alexa, help me with something. The girl looked at Russell, left the room, and whispered to Mrs. Jones, forgive me. For what? For starting this game. Russell got up because of me. He felt worse because of me, not worse sighed the governess. He just has very little strength. He'll rest a bit, and everything will be fine. Really? Can he recover? Mrs. 
Jones didn't answer this question. They sat in the kitchen for an hour or two, almost not talking and gazing out of the window. Russell fell asleep, and Alexa didn't see him anymore that evening, thinking she might never see him again. Thank you for inviting me, the girl said when Mrs. Jones dropped her off at home. Thank you too. What for? For today. I heard Russell laugh for the first time in a long while. The governess replied. Alexa looked at Mrs. Jones and, for the first time, realized how old she was. Her carefully arranged curls seemed tousled and fake, like the hair of her old doll. There were too many wrinkles on her face. How old was she? 80? 90? Or maybe she looked so old because Russell was sick, because she worried too much about him. Alexa entered the house, continuing to recall the events of this strange day, meeting the sick Russell, the peculiar football game, the pastries. Alexa remembered everything except that her father had deceived her. It already seemed unimportant, until she met her dad coming out of the kitchen. He was already in casual clothes and looked pleased with himself. Seeing his daughter, he smiled. Alexa, how was your day? Where did you go with Mrs. Jones? Alexa frowned at her father. His cheerfulness surprised her. I was at her house, unexpected. And how was it? Napkins, lace, and all that stuff. It was normal. Dad, why do you care where I was and what I did? I don't ask you where you've been. Alexa tried to bypass him and go to her room but he caught her shoulder. I don't understand. What's with the attitude? Alexa sighed. Dad, you promised we would go to the park. I've been waiting for this day all week, and then you left in the morning and didn't even tell me about it. Sent me with the governess, like any other day. So, you're upset. Her father interrupted. If he looked embarrassed, it was only slightly. Yes, Dad, I'm upset. Although, Perhaps, it's not so bad that I went to Mrs. Jones. She had fun. Fun, her father exclaimed. But you couldn't stand her, and wrongly so. She turned out to be quite normal. Alexa walked into her room and closed the door in front of her surprised father. He thought for a moment and muttered, If you want, we'll go somewhere next weekend. I promise you, you already promised. Alexa whispered. A stroll with her father no longer enticed her so much. Her desire had changed. Alexa already knew where to go next weekend. To Mrs. Jones and her grandson. She just had to figure out how to make it happen. But the girl didn't even have to try. The following Sunday, her father went to work again, and Mrs. Jones's old car pulled up to their house. Where shall we go? Mrs. Jones asked, to your place, if that's okay, Alexa said. All week they hadn't said a word about the previous visit of the girl to their home. They behaved as if nothing had happened. And then suddenly Alexa became bold and brought up the topic herself. Today, there's no rain. The sun is shining. Maybe Russell will want to go for a walk. He rarely leaves the house, sighed Mrs. Jones. He's not in the mood and he doesn't have the strength for a long work. But we can try. Maybe he'll agree to go somewhere by car. Alexa rushed into the apartment, took off her boots, and without removing her coat, ran into the room. Russell was sitting in an armchair reading a book. When he saw the guest, he almost dropped the book. You again, Botton. Couldn't you at least knock when you enter a room? Alexa went out the door, knocked twice, and returned. Hi. Is this better? What are you reading? She approached Russell and looked at the book cover. So thick. Probably from Grandma's library. Ha. Huh. Is it interesting? Not really. But it suits the mood. Russell tossed the book onto the bed and looked at Alexa. Why did you come? To play football. I don't feel like it today. Sorry. Russell spoke quite amicably. And Alexa felt relieved. Although her friend was still pale and it worried her. Friend. I wonder when she managed to assign Russell that title. Then let's go for a work. Alexa suggested. Your grandma will take us wherever we want. Where, for example? Russell inquired. Alexa thought. You don't want to play football. She said, 
So let's go to the riverside. We can feed the ducks or skip stones into the water who throws father. Russell remained silent for a long time. Then he nodded. Let's go. Maybe I can beat you there. Alexa remembered this day for the rest of her life. The laughter, jokes, even Mrs. Jones laughed. They fed ducks. And despite his condition, Russell managed to throw a stone farther than her. Their work didn't last long. He quickly grew tired. Visiting them became a habit for the girl, but it happened less and less. Russell is not feeling very well today. Mrs. Jones would say on the phone, will you drop by another time? All right, Alexa agreed. She had never seen Russell's parents and wondered why his grandmother dealt with him alone. She also feared that something might happen to Russell while Mrs. Jones was at work. What then? Alexa dared to talk about it with the governess. Mrs. Jones, where are Russell's mom and dad? She asked, do they work every day like my dad? So they're never home. They left when Russell got sick. Left. Where to? Mrs. Jones didn't know if she should tell the girl the details. Alexa reassured her, I won't tell anyone. I promise, but everyone already knows. Sighed Mrs. Jones. His mom, my daughter, went to work when he got sick. She only comes to us on vacation or when Russell gets really bad. And Russell's dad just left. How so? Alexa wondered. He disappeared. Said it was hard for him to look at a sick child. That he couldn't help here. Packed his things and left. None of us has seen or heard from him since. Alexa was silent, struck by such a story. She often got angry with her father. He disappeared at work instead of spending time with her. But the girl knew that at any moment, she could call him and ask for help. Russell didn't have that option. Only his mother and grandmother helped him, and they were constantly working. He sat alone at home. Is that why you work without weekends? The girl whispered. To cure Russell, Mrs. Jones nodded and looked away. Alexa hugged her and said, everything will be fine. Russell will definitely get better. Mrs. Jones didn't reply. It seemed the girl's words didn't uplift her. One day, when her father turned 40, Alexa asked Mrs. Jones to take her to the office where her father worked. I want to surprise him, the girl said, at least once in his life. If dad keeps running away from me, I have to catch him. Are you sure? Mrs. Jones asked. Maybe he'll feel uncomfortable. Or your father will be celebrating at work. He always does everything at work, Alexa said. But it's worth a try, right? We'll wait for him for an hour. And if he doesn't come out, we'll go home. The car set off on the road. Alexa feared that the wait would be long. But it turned out the opposite. As they approached the office, her father appeared on the porch. Dad is early today, Alexa exclaimed. Does he really want to celebrate his birthday with me? She reached for the door to get out of the car. But Mrs. Jones stopped her. It seemed the governess understood everything before Alexa did. He reached out and took the arm of a blonde woman in a luxurious coat. Alexa didn't hear what her father was saying to the stranger but it seemed to be something joyful because they were both laughing. In complete shock, she watched her dad walk away arm in arm with the stranger. Then she crumpled the drawing she had prepared as a gift for her father. Sorry, said Mrs. Jones. For what? Alexa asked. I shouldn't have brought you here. You shouldn't have seen this, Mrs. Jones. I'm not a little girl anymore, and I know that men can date someone. I just didn't think it would happen with my dad. Alexa was surprised by how calm her voice sounded. In reality, the girl wanted to scream and throw things. Her father not only deceived her, but he was also cheating. Even though Alexa's mother had died many years ago, she felt offended. He lied to her. Why? He could have told everything instead of leaving every day, citing work. However, Alexa wasn't sure she wanted her father to remarry and bring this blonde woman home. Let him date her somewhere far away. And she, Alexa, would continue to pretend she knew nothing. She was sure she could forget what she saw in front of the office. Let's go home. 
Alexa sighed. It seems like the celebration is cancelled. Alexa thought that the betrayal she experienced in childhood would give her immunity, make her immune to something similar in the future. However, it didn't happen. When telling Russell about being hit on the head by her husband, Alexa guessed what conversation would follow. It started with Russell's question, why do you think it was your husband trying to kill you? Did he have a reason for that? No. Alexa whispered, did you have a fight? Also not true. We lived quietly and peacefully. We seemed perfect from the outside. I don't understand. You lived happily with this. Mason, like angels, and he wanted to get rid of you. Is he crazy? Alexa noted how Russell pronounced her husband's name with some disgust. For some reason, it pleased her. I didn't say we lived happily, she retorted. I just said that's how it seemed to everyone from the outside. And in reality, in reality, Mason had a lover. I found out about it completely by accident. Alexa closed her eyes, recalling the emotions that overwhelmed her at that moment. Shock, disbelief, anger. She felt them then and now. Believing that betrayal had occurred again was very difficult. Then Alexa remembered who she was talking to. She looked at him, afraid to see mockery on Russell's face. But he seemed thoughtful. Are you sure? He asked. Or did it just seem that way? As it sometimes happens, Alexa understood what he was hinting at and flared up. It didn't just seem that way. I found messages on his phone from that girl. She clearly and in detail described what she wanted to do with my husband. Sorry, Russell said. Still, having a mistress is not a reason to get rid of a wife, is it? I don't know. Lately, Mason and I lived like complete strangers, hardly communicating, scandals erupting out of nowhere. I thought if not Mason, then no one else for money. Russell said, and for the sake of getting freedom, Russell was silent for a moment and then said, by the way, I still haven't written the money to you. Well, the ones you gave me back then, Alexa shook her head. You don't owe me anything. It's all in the past. Some things and situations of the past never go away. Russell said, Alexa remained silent. He sighed and said, maybe you're right. Let's go to sleep. We are both tired. You need to rest to recover. Do you want something? Sweet tea or... No, Alexa said. Good night. You too. Sweet dreams. Russell turned off the lamp and left. And Alexa felt tears streaming down her cheeks. Sweet dreams. Who and when was the last time someone wished her something like that? She couldn't remember. Her childhood visits to Russell became less frequent until they stopped altogether. For Alexa... It was a shock. Mrs. Jones won't come today. The housekeeper told the girl on a Sunday morning when she was waiting for the governess as usual. Why? What happened? I'm not sure. It seems her grandson is not feeling well. Alexa froze. Russell, what happened to him? And why didn't Mrs. Jones call? Did the governess forget about her? Just like her father did. No, Mrs. Jones is not like that. Probably, she just doesn't have time for it. And that means something really terrible has happened. Alexa waited for two hours and called the governess herself. Mrs. Jones didn't answer the phone. So Alexa left a message on the voicemail. Mrs. Jones, please call me as soon as you can. It's very important. Mrs. Jones called back about 20 minutes later. Her voice sounded very tired. Hello, Alexa. What did you want? To find out what happened to Russell. Where is he now? Russell is in the hospital. Mrs. Jones said. He felt unwell this morning. What's wrong with him? I can't explain it properly. I'm not a doctor. Mrs. Jones sighed. I'll just say that his illness has worsened significantly. Could he die? Alexa asked. Over the weeks spent with Russell, she had become so accustomed to him that life without her friend seemed impossible. Not now, but without proper treatment. I'm afraid yes. What about money? Can it help? You work so hard to help Russell. So it's about money, right? Mrs. Jones sighed. Alexa, dear, 
money and health are not the same. Yes, if we had enough money, we could send Russell abroad. There is one treatment, still experimental. But Alexa didn't bother to listen. She hung up. Then, she dialed her father's number. He didn't answer for a very long time. Alexa frowned, imagining her father somewhere with his blonde. Finally, he picked up. Alexa, something happened. He asked, Dad, what time will you come today? Alexa asked, why, I need you to come earlier. The girl replied, even at such a young age. She understood that discussing Russell would be better in person, not over the phone, and can't wait until tomorrow. I don't know when I'll be back. Alexa thought she heard some noises in the background. It seemed her father wasn't alone. No, the girl said. It's important, important matter. Her father sighed. All right, I'll be back by nine. I hope what's important for you is not a lost doll or buying a puppy. Alexa hung up and began pacing from corner to corner. Would her father fulfill her request? He must, or everything would be lost. But what if he didn't? Alexa, it's time for dinner. Meredith called from downstairs. The girl looked at the clock. Dinner means it's already seven. Not much time left to wait, but how long these two hours would feel. Alexa had no appetite, yet eating was worth it to avoid unnecessary questions from the housekeeper. She swallowed the chicken almost without chewing, and Meredith looked at the girl with surprise. You're acting strange. What happened? I'm worried about Russell. Russell, Mrs. Jones's grandson. Poor boy, what happened to him? He hasn't done anything in life yet. He still has time, Alexa said. I meant he hasn't done anything wrong. The housekeeper added. Alexa realized that Meredith was lying. In reality, she meant something else. That Russell's time was running out. Alexa stayed in the living room, not to miss her father's arrival. Would her father return on time? Could he have lied again? Alexa no longer trusted her own father. However, she had no other people to rely on. Her father didn't lie. Alexa met him in the hallway, rushing there as soon as she heard the key turn in the lock. What are you doing here? He exclaimed, seeing her. Why aren't you in your room? I'm waiting for you. I told you it was urgent, Alexa said. So, it really is serious. He replied, I hope the problem is still about a lost doll, not something else. No. Dad, it's not about the doll. He sighed and headed to the living room. The girl feared what this conversation might lead to, but she couldn't back down. He sat on the sofa. Alexa glanced at the door leading to the kitchen and whispered, let's go to my room. Why, someone might hear, oh my God. Are you afraid the servants will eavesdrop? Alexa nodded, what mysterious thing do you want to tell me? He asked, I'll tell you in my room. Alexa repeated. Her father looked irritated but complied. He waited for Alexa to close the door behind her and asked, So, what's the secret? Why did you urgently call me home? Mrs. Jones didn't come today, Alexa said. I know. She warned me. And so what? People are entitled to weekends. Her grandson is sick. Well, he has been sick for a long time. But today he got worse. Alexa said, I'm aware of that too. I don't understand where you're leading with this. The thing is, Russell can be cured. We just need to gather enough money. And you have it. We have it. Alexa said. He remained silent for a while and then asked, Did Mrs. Jones instruct you to talk about this? Why do you think that? Well, you couldn't have figured this out on your own. Did she tell you to ask me for money? Am I right? No. Alexa said indignantly. I decided this on my own. What did you decide? I decided to help Russell. Mrs. Jones won't be able to raise a lot of money or do it quickly. And Russell could die in the meantime. Alexa didn't want to utter those words, knowing she would cry. And indeed, tears streamed down Alexa's cheeks as her father looked at her in surprise. Alexa, there are thousands of sick children in the world, he said. I can't help them all. You can't. Alexa agreed. 
but you can help at least Russell. What's with this sudden concern? Her father exclaimed. Because Russell is my friend. Alexa replied. Nonsense. Her father shook his head. Giving crazy amounts of money to that old woman. Throwing them into nowhere. Alexa was offended by her father's disdainful attitude towards Mrs. Jones. However, she didn't argue. The main thing was to achieve the goal. Everything else didn't matter. Not nowhere. Alexa corrected. You'll be saving Russell's life. Alexa, you don't know how hard it is to earn money. Do you think I just sit in my office and play all day? No. Or maybe you do. But with that woman in the fur coat. What woman? He exclaimed. She has such light hair. Alexa said. Down to her waist. And an annoying laugh. He couldn't recover from the shock. If you give money to Russell. I won't mind if you talk to her. You can even marry her if you want. Alexa said. He jumped up and started pacing around the room. He mumbled something to himself. And only a few words reached Alexa's ears. Didn't plan to get married. Nonsense. What kind of fantasies? Alexa patiently waited for his response. Finally, he stopped and looked at her. A strange expression. A mix of irritation and amusement. Froze on his face. Charity. He said. Fine. I'll do it. Let's start a publicity campaign. Invite journalists. Get it covered in the press. Our company will be known nationwide. If we try hard enough, maybe we can even get some benefits. So, you'll help Russell. Alexa clarified. She wasn't particularly interested in these business discussions. Let her father do as he pleased. The main thing was for him to give the money. I'll help. Your wish is my command. But drop all this nonsense about the woman. Understand, I don't want to hear about her again. Alexa gestured as of locking her lips. Her father snorted and left the room, saying as a parting remark, I'll call Mrs. Jones tomorrow. It's too late now. Alexa didn't argue. She had achieved her goal. Russell would be saved. The next day she woke up early, dressed, and hurried to the kitchen. Her father was already there eating his sandwiches and flipping through some documents. Seeing Alexa, he asked in surprise, Where are you going? School starts at 8, doesn't it? Not to school. To the hospital, Alexa said, opening the refrigerator. And here I am wondering why your socks are different colors and the shoe uniform is strange. Her father noticed. Alexa, this won't work. You'll go to the hospital after school. As I said, but you used to say we would go to the park, work on weekends, and something else. Alexa said. None of that happened. He looked at her strangely and remained silent. Alexa waited for her father to burst out, but he grumbled. You're a stubborn one, my daughter. Some ones won't be lucky with such future wife. Can I go to the hospital? She clarified. Go. Her father agreed. But let this be the first and last time. Understand? Alexa kissed him on the cheek, stuffed a sandwich into his mouth, and rushed out of the kitchen. Thanks, Daddy. Alexa met Mrs. Jones at the hospital entrance. They arrived almost simultaneously. The girl jumped out of the taxi and ran to her governess. Mrs. Jones was surprised by her appearance. Alexa, why aren't you in school? I want to see Russell. Can I visit him? Probably yes. But after the procedures. And did your dad let you go? Of course. Alexa nodded. Although it was tough. You know how strict my dad is. The girl understood that her wide smile looked out of place in this setting. But she couldn't help it. She had no intention of telling Mrs. Jones about everything before her father. Let it be a surprise for her. They climbed to the second floor. Alexa's joy subsided a bit. Hospital walls always pressed on her. With a certain feeling, the girl understood that people come here not to measure height or weight. Alexa stopped smiling and grabbed Mrs. Jones's hand. Is Russell really here? Yes, yes, Mrs. Jones nodded. She led Alexa to one of the benches along the wall and asked, Wait here, I'll find a doctor. She disappeared into one of the offices 
and Alexa waited eagerly. Mrs. Jones emerged in the corridor half an hour later, looking stunned. She looked at the girl as if seeing her for the first time. I was told that Mr. Helson called, or some representative from his company. I didn't quite understand. He asked about Russell. Will dad help? Alexa asked. Yes, Mrs. Jones nodded, tears glistening in her eyes. Did you ask him? What does it matter? The main thing is that Russell will finally be healthy. He did recover, although the doctors didn't guarantee a 100% success. The months Russell spent abroad were the most challenging in Alexa's life. She missed him a lot, worried, and had to go to school, as she promised. However, on the day Russell was returning to town, the girl broke her promise. She found herself near her friend's house long before the plane landed at the airport. By the time the taxi brought Mrs. Jones and her grandson into the yard, Alexa's excitement had reached its peak. As soon as Russell got out of the car, she threw herself at him, hugged him for a moment, let go, and joyfully exclaimed, You did come back. It sounds like I shouldn't have, Russell said. There was no irritation in his voice, only happiness. This is for you, Alexa, he said, handing her a bag. Souvenirs, thank you. The girl nodded. She barely glanced at what was inside. All her attention was consumed by Russell. Well, I see blush on your cheeks for the first time. It's so unusual. Hope you don't think I put on makeup. No, of course not. But I won't be able to call you an albino anymore. Try it. You'll forever be a button. I'll never call you by your name. Remember that, even after a hundred years. Alexa listened to his grumbling and then laughed. In her heart, joy still bubbled. But now it was even greater. Russell said he would be there for a hundred years. Perhaps she really wanted that. Later, recalling this moment, Alexa thought that it was then she fell in love. However, the 100 measured years with Russell did not pass as smoothly as she had hoped. The reason for that was his return to normal life. He returned to school, and Alexa immersed herself in her studies. Both of them gained new friends and acquaintances, and they saw each other less often. Although Alexa tried to visit Russell after classes at school, she became friends with Jasmine. Jasmine joined their class in high school when Alexa was 16, and she immediately disliked by most classmates for some unknown reason. Alexa felt sorry for her, unable to tolerate such treatment. Seizing the moment when everyone was getting ready to go home, Alexa approached Jasmine and asked, Are you in a hurry? Jasmine looked at her cautiously. No, I'm going home, Jasmine said. Do your parents wait for you right now? I don't know. Why does it matter? Maybe you'd like to come to my place. Why? I noticed that you have the lead singer of Nirvana on many of your notebooks. We can have cookies and listen to music. Alexa knew that Jasmine's family was not very wealthy. Her mother worked as a saleswoman and there was no father. How would she react to this invitation? Perhaps, seeing Alexa's house, she would think that she was arrogant and proud of her father's money. But that wasn't true. Alexa had two qualities that were unpleasant to herself. She overthought trivial matters and sympathized with everyone who had suffered from fate. It happened with Russell, and it was the same now. Why do you need this? Just inviting you as a friend. Alexa understood that it sounded silly, but she couldn't find another reason. Okay. If you don't want to go, you don't have to. Alexa sighed and was about to leave when Jasmine grabbed her hand. No, I want to. How are we going to get there? I heard you live in the suburbs. Does a bus go there? It does, but we won't take it. A car with a driver will pick me up, Alexa said, experiencing a new wave of embarrassment. Mrs. Jones hadn't visited her for two years. Health problems had arisen, and it became challenging for her to work. Alexa managed without a governess. The cheerful driver Spencer, a man of pre-retirement age with the character of a child, took her place. Look, today I have not one princess but two. He greeted the girls. Where shall we go? Home or for some fun? Home for fun. 
Alexa said. Will you later take Jasmine back to the city? No problem. He nodded. Jasmine sat with a bewildered look, running her hand over the leather seats. Most likely, it was her first time in such a car. Judging by how modestly the girl dressed, her family probably didn't have a car at all. Alexa's cottage caused even greater confusion for her. How many rooms are there? Jasmine asked when they entered the hall. Five. Not counting dad's office and the library. Jasmine looked around, examining the expensive furniture, curtains, and some figurines on the fireplace mantel. She hadn't seen anything like it even in a museum. Let's go. Alexa called her. I'll show you my room. Jasmine's face expressed delight and envy as she looked around. Unfortunately, Alexa didn't notice the latter feeling of her new friend. Tell me about yourself. She asked Jasmine when she brought lemonade and homemade cookies into the room. I don't know anything except the school you attended before. What else is there to tell? Jasmine shrugged. My mom and I live in a tiny apartment with old furniture and a leaking ceiling. She works almost every day, taking extra shifts at her store. There's nothing interesting here. What do you do when you come home from school? Alexa asked. I cook dinner, watch various TV series, play music. Do you have any brothers or sisters? Jasmine asked. No, although I wouldn't mind. Alexa replied. Seriously. Jasmine was surprised. You'd like someone else, but everything belongs to you. You're the only mistress here, not the only one. Alexa corrected her. There's also dad, but that doesn't count. Anyway, I wouldn't want anyone else. I often hear stories about older brothers and sisters bullying. What's the point? But not everyone is like that. Alexa noted. There are normal ones. Normal, Jasmine said. I would like a normal brother, a boxer, or a karateka to protect me. Then no one would dare to bother me. Do you get bullied a lot? Alexa asked. Don't you see it yourself? Our guys don't behave very well. Alexa admitted. But they don't hit you, do they? Jasmine shook her head. No. Okay. Let's talk about something more fun. For example, will you show me something from your clothes? Not the school uniform, but what you usually wear. There are probably expensive brands there. Right, I'm not really into clothes. Well, let's see. Alexa agreed. Jasmine opened the wardrobe. There were no exclamations of admiration. But Jasmine looked at everything with such reverence that Alexa couldn't resist and gave her one of her sweaters. We seem to have the same size. It will fit you. She said, Jasmine rushed to hug her. Is this really for me? Thank you. You know, I've always dreamed of finding a best friend. Like in the movies. Let's become best friends for each other. But could Alexa refuse when she was looked at with such enthusiastic eyes? From that day on, they became almost inseparable. Jasmine moved to the desk next to Alexa, followed her everywhere. She even started to look better. Following Alexa's advice, she visited her acquaintance, a hairstylist, and got a trendy haircut. Gradually, Jasmine stopped being bullied. The girls did become friends, going out together, chatting about nonsense, and trusting each other with secrets. However, Alexa couldn't tell Jasmine about Russell, or more precisely, reveal the truth about what he meant to her. Something told her that it wasn't the right thing to do. Jasmine was puzzled and offended when Alexa met Russell, instead of watching movies or wandering around shopping malls together. What's so special about this guy? She would ask. You said you're not dating. We're not dating. Alexa would agree. We're just friends. There's no such thing as friendship between guys and girls. Jasmine confidently declared. You like him, okay? Okay, maybe I do like him a bit. Alexa admitted but it doesn't mean anything. Russell doesn't even know about it, so tell him about your feelings. What are you waiting for? It's awkward. Right now, at least, we're friends. What if Russell stops talking to me altogether after this, or someone else takes him away while you are dragging your feet? Choose, Jasmine replied. This statement left an unpleasant feeling in Alexa's heart, 
and then it would resurface in her memory more than once. Alexa never gathered the courage to confess her feelings to Russell. Everything resolved itself somehow. One day, Russell, who was already in college by then, invited Alexa to a college party. Many will come there with their girlfriends, he explained. So I thought maybe you'd like to come with their girlfriends. Alexa repeated, blushing. You mean that I, if you want, we can go as friends, Russell replied. That's also possible. Alexa realized that this was her chance. Perhaps the only one. No, I want to go as a girlfriend, she said. Alexa never regretted what she said during the few years they were dating. For those around them, not much changed in their behavior. Alexa, just like before, went to football games with Russell, watched TV at his place, or cooked something delicious for him and Mrs. Jones, Mrs. Jones began spending entire days in bed, and Alexa was deeply concerned for her. Doctors say it's age-related. Russell sadly explained, There's nothing we can do now. We can only try to support her as much as possible. Russell's mother had moved to another town, started a new family, and hardly remembered Mrs. Jones or her son. Russell didn't hold it against her. My mom went through a lot because of me, he would say. Let her live for herself now. It's better this way. To whom? To you or Mrs. Jones, who lies here alone. I'm he too. Russell countered. I'm paying back for what she did for me. Russell found a job as a stock clerk in a store near their home. His work, his studies, and Alexa's studies led to them seeing each other less and less. However, Jasmine saw Alexa even less, and their friendship strained. A real argument between them happened when Alexa couldn't make it to Jasmine's birthday. You were probably with that guy of yours again, Jasmine said, pouting. She avoided calling Russell by name, as if afraid to get dirty. Not exactly with him, with Mrs. Jones. She felt unwell yesterday, and Russell had a tough day at work. He couldn't take time off. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Jasmine continued to stay silent. Alexa took her hand. Well, let's celebrate on Sunday. We don't have to mark every holiday on the exact day. Until Sunday, the pie I baked won't last. But overall, I think you won't come to me before Christmas. Why is that? Alexa wondered. Because you constantly promise something, and then everything falls apart. Either Russell is busy, and you need to stay with his grandmother, or vice versa, he's free and you rush off to him. Don't you think it's all a game? In what sense? Alexa asked. In the sense that he's using you, dating you for the money. This thought had never crossed Alexa's mind, probably because it seemed too absurd. Russell has never asked me for anything. She said. He didn't ask. Jasmine agreed. But you once handed him a bunch of money. Or rather, your dad did. But it doesn't matter. Do you think he forgot about it? Surely he thinks that anything can happen in life. Maybe he'll need more for his grandmother. For example, Alexa jerked her hand away and stared at her friend as if she were some kind of monster. She couldn't believe she was hearing such things from Jasmine. Why are you saying such things? Russell is not like that at all. You've never really talked to him once. How do you know what's going on in his head? And you, the love struck full. Jasmine declared, you won't see anything clearly because of your feelings. Maybe he's already dating someone else while seeing you. Alexa didn't bother to listen to this nonsense. She rushed out of the apartment. Russell is not like that. She repeated to herself. Jasmine is just making things up. On the other hand, why would she do that? What if I really don't notice anything because of my love? What if Jasmine is right? On that day, Russell was supposed to work at the store. Alexa felt uneasy and decided to go see him. She thought that just seeing him, hugging him, would make everything right. However, Alexa's wish was not meant to come true. Russell wasn't at the store. He couldn't make it today. Said some things came up. One of the salespeople said, What things could have come up for Russell? Who assured her that he would be working all day. Alexa went to his home, but he wasn't there. To occupy herself. 
She read a book from Mrs. Jones for a while, and then started preparing dinner. Russell arrived at the usual time. Alexa greeted him in the hallway, putting on a smile. Hey, Russell said absent-mindedly. Are you here? I thought you said you'd start preparing for the exams. You've said a lot too. Alexa thought, but aloud she said, I'm already prepared. It was easy. And how was your day? As usual. Unloading trucks, he replied. Russell kissed her on the cheek and went to the room to greet his grandmother. Alexa stood there in shock. Russell had always seemed like an honest person. Perfect. The best of all. What else was Russell hiding from her? And how far could he go in his deceit? That night, Alexa could hardly close her eyes. She fell asleep only towards morning. She dreamt that Russell was flirting with some other girls. Alexa was almost relieved when she was awakened by a phone call. It was Jasmine, speaking in a strange tone. Forgive me for yesterday, she said. I don't know what came over me. Said all sorts of nonsense. I'm a fool, Alexa. How can I make it up to you? Or maybe it's not you who's the fool, but me. Alexa mumbled. What are you talking about? Did something happen? I found out that Russell lied to me. Really? About what? Yesterday, he was supposed to work at the store. But when I went there, I didn't find Russell. The salesperson said he had taken the day off. But when I asked Russell the same thing in the evening, he said he had been working. I can't figure out how to explain this. That's quite a story, Jasmine said. Confront him and ask what's going on. You know he wasn't at work. The evidence is right there. Any salesperson can confirm it. It will seem like I don't trust Russell and I'm spying on him. Alexa sighed. Do you trust him after what happened? Jasmine asked. Alexa remained silent. I'll help you, said Jasmine. How? I'll keep an eye on Russell. See where he goes, what he does. I've almost finished all my exams. I have plenty of free time to help my best friend. No, Jasmine. It's not right. It's not right to deceive your girlfriend. Jasmine countered. Anyway, wait for news. I'll dig up something. She hung up, and Alexa sat there for some time, still holding the phone. She didn't know herself whether she wanted to know the truth. Maybe it's better to leave things as they are. For several days, everything remained as before. Alexa visited Russell, cooked for Mrs. Jones, watched a couple of football matches with Russell, and tried to focus on her studies. Everything seemed normal, but Alexa felt like a disaster was looming, and it struck at the very moment when she was starting to believe that everything was fine. I have some news for you, but I want to share it in person. Jasmine said over the phone. How about meeting at our usual cafe around one? At one. But I promised Russell that I would go with him. After I tell you what I know, you probably won't want to go anywhere with him at all. Jasmine interrupted. So decide for yourself. You're scaring me, sighed Alexa. If it's something terrible, tell me now. Why wait? No, in person. I want to catch you if you collapse from this news. So, shall we meet at the usual place? Okay. I'll come. Alexa arrived at the cafe even before the appointed time, telling Russell that she urgently needed to stop by the institute. Can you believe it? Half a year away, and nothing has changed. A voice behind her said. Alexa jumped in fright. Jasmine, you can't sneak up like that. She said, I didn't sneak up. You were floating in the clouds and didn't notice me at all. Jasmine replied, Jasmine, what did you want to tell me? I found compromising evidence on your Russell. I'm afraid you won't like it. Compromising evidence. What is it? Jasmine silently placed her phone on the table. On the screen was a photo that Alexa would remember for the rest of her days. Russell was kissing some blonde on the waterfront. Another blonde, just like the one with her father back then. Alexa thought she hated blonde people. Many years later, she had the same thought when she woke up to someone mumbling and saw Russell's light head. They were arguing about something with Hugh, and it woke Alexa up. She says, you better listen to her more. Hugh interrupted his friend. 
This Alexa can come up with anything. Women's fantasies. She was hit on the head. Who knows what kind of nonsense she can come up with, but someone hit her. Do you think she hit herself at home against a wardrobe, and then crawled he to the dumpster? It's not my business to investigate. I'm not an investigator, Hugh said, and you are not either. Remember how she investigated everything herself? Came up with something and blamed you for everything. Can you keep it down? Alexa asked. My head is pounding. The men looked at her. Sure, Hugh said. I suggest we just forget about this whole story. Who hit whom is known of our business. Say thank you that you weren't taken to the hospital as you should have been. I didn't know back then that you're a pathologist, mumbled Alexa. Maybe I would have gone to the hospital. But now it's too late. Why? Hugh was surprised. There's a phone connection here. Now I feel better. So I want to stay. Alexa replied. Hugh looked at her, then at Russell, and waved his hand. Do whatever you want. You've already played doctors. Now play detectives. We were talking about your husband. Russell explained. About him supposedly hitting you. No one else. Alexa confirmed. And, to be honest, because of him, I'm afraid to go home now. What kind of person is he? Russell asked. Who was Mason? But the question was complicated. He was the guy who helped her prepare for her diploma. An unimaginable nerd collecting stamps. At times a whiner and a hypochondriac. A liar and also a murderer. Alexa had learned about this side of her husband not too long ago. After my father's death, I took over the company, Alexa said. And Mason was my deputy. An annoying and tedious one. But you could always rely on him. At least at work, at the head of the company. Well, well, Hugh said. And what does it produce? If it's not a secret, all sorts of construction materials, me haze, and wire. Now we have evidence. Your husband won't get away, Hugh said. You were clearly hit on the head with a brick. A construction material. Only your husband could use it. Not funny, Alexa muttered. I told you, he's not good with humor, Russell said. With his support, Alexa felt a bit easier. And she continued. Lately, we only discussed work-related issues. We hardly talked about our family life. And there was nothing to talk about. At first, I was upset about it. But then, when I found his correspondence on the phone, I understood what was going on. Mason found someone else, and I wasn't needed. It might sound strange, but I had no intention of fixing our relationship because there was nothing to fix. I even felt relieved when I learned the truth. I wanted to file for divorce, but I didn't have time. What happened, happened. Alexa pointed to her head, and the day of the attack. What do you remember? Russell asked. That day, Alexa pondered. We were planning to celebrate Mason's birthday at the country house. A few years ago, we thought it would be nice to have a house somewhere away from the city. The city has grown a lot now. Even where I live, it's uncomfortable. That's the rich live, Hugh said. They find two-story cottages uncomfortable. Alexa sat up and exclaimed indignantly, I'm not to blame for being born in this house. Should I endure it? Sell the family home and go live in a shack. My father didn't steal his money. He earned it. His parents were teachers. I'll wait. All right. I'll go put the kettle on. You guys keep premonising about who, where, and at what time planned this crime. Alexa lay down again and stared at the ceiling. I decided not to spoil the celebration with relationship issues. She said, I thought we'd celebrate, and then I'd tell my husband about the divorce. Guests had been invited for a long time, and were there many guests? Russell asked, about 40 or 50 people. I don't exactly remember, a lot of people. Are you sure no one else could have done it? Russell asked, who, for example? Alexa smiled, Mr. Cott, the accountant, got angry because I didn't accept his report. Someone among Russell's friends. Did Jasmine envy my new dress? Besides Mason, 
no one else comes to mind. He was the only one with a motive to kill me. Where was he when you left the house? I didn't keep an eye on him, Alexa said. It seems he went to the kitchen with his friends, but it's not certain. Or maybe he locked himself in the bathroom and was texting with her, with his lover. Well, not with his personal advisor, probably. Alexa grumbled. Russell, forgive me for this. I just can't think about my husband calmly. And what about Russell? Hugh asked, returning with the kettle and cups. Breakfast is coming up. To avoid answering his question, Alexa spoke quickly. And then I got fed up with everything the music. Polite smiles. I wanted to escape. So I did. Went out to the garden. Worked to its farthest part to be alone. But you didn't manage to be alone. There. A killer was waiting for you. Hugh said. Yes. Alexa nodded. And the next person I saw was you. She said to Russell. I didn't expect our meeting to happen like this. Yeah. Russell sighed. I didn't expect it either. When parting ways with Russell at 19, Alexa had never planned to meet him again. She wanted to erase him from her life once and for all. Right. Jasmine would say when Alexa voiced her thoughts. Why do you need a liar? You should be with an honest, decent person. Where will I find someone like that? Alexa sighed. I feel like I won't be able to trust anyone now. Russell was the best. And even he, he wasn't. Jasmine said. You see what happened? Alexa saw. Why did she keep the photo of Russell kissing a blonde? She didn't understand herself. It was a kind of masochism. Alexa occasionally took it out of her diary, looked at it, and then hid it again. She did the right thing by breaking up with Russell. So why did it hurt so much? She didn't have the courage to talk to him and explain things properly. Their only phone conversation ended quickly. At least explain to me what's wrong. Russell pleaded. What did I do wrong? Don't you know yourself? No. Otherwise, I wouldn't be asking. You cheated on me. Alexa said. Cheated. When? And with whom? Can you explain that? Alexa couldn't and didn't want to. What was the point of discussing what happened when the evidence was right there in her hands? Alexa looked at the photo again, sighed, and put it away. You lie too much and hide things from me. She said, I have no idea since when, but it doesn't matter. I wish you happiness, and please don't deceive the other woman the same way you deceived me. She didn't listen to what else Russell had to say and hung up. A strange feeling, as if she had made a mistake, didn't leave Alexa. But where had she gone wrong? Russell had indeed lied to her when he said he worked in a store. Although he wasn't there, was it worth finding out the details, digging into this mess, and getting even deeper into it? Russell used to dislike the house where she lived. Too luxurious for me. As Russell used to say, he had been heat twice. Once he sat in the kitchen, looked around, and quickly left. He didn't seem to plan on coming back. The pomp and circumstance really weighed on him, but for the sake of meeting her father, he made an exception and came. Dinner that time was very uncomfortable. Mr. Helson was not thrilled with Alexa's boyfriend, although he tried to keep his emotions to himself. Russell couldn't wait to leave. That was the end of his visits. Alexa herself would go to him and Mrs. Jones. Now, after their official breakup, Russell started coming to her. He would just come and stand in front of the house. Alexa saw him from the window. She saw but tried to hide behind the curtains. She didn't understand what Russell wanted. To talk to her. Then why stand there in silence? Was he waiting for her to come out on her own? He could at least draw something. Jasmine said when Alexa told her about it. Draw what? Anything. A heart. For example. Or write Russell plus Alexa equals love. Or just forgive me. Everyone knows that. Russell never does anything like everyone else. Alexa said. It's not his style. Well, then he doesn't love you. Forget about him. Jasmine said. It was summer. But Alexa hardly went anywhere to avoid accidentally running into Russell. Then, closer to the end of August, 
Russell himself stopped coming. Love has passed. Jasmine said. Alexa felt like she had lost something valuable. But can a liar and a cheater be considered valuable? School started, and it helped the girl to perk up a bit. Studies distracted her from personal problems, and then Mason transferred to their group. He wasn't handsome, of average height, and his physique was far from that of a superhero. But Alexa immediately noticed him, and how could she not when he arrived late for the very first lecture? burst into the auditorium and plopped down on the nearest available seat next to her. Is this taken? Alexa shook her head and warned in a whisper. If you keep talking, they'll kick both of us out. The newcomer smiled and nodded, leaning over his notebook. Something pricked inside at the sight of that smile. It seemed like this guy couldn't possibly lie. Mason had studied in another city before but returned. His father got sick and someone needed to take care of him. Besides, there was no one else to do it. Just don't fall in love with him. Jasmine warned when Alexa told her the story of Mason. Why should I immediately fall in love? Because you love such pitiable and miserable ones. Like others pity stray puppies. Alexa forgot that she herself had once been such a puppy. However, now there was nothing in Jasmine's appearance that reminded of her past. She learned to do makeup worked part-time in a cafe, bought some clothes, and even switched from glasses to lenses. Most importantly, she became a platinum blonde, attracting the attention of many guys. I'm not going to fall in love with anyone, Alexa sighed. Russell was enough for me, but I don't think you plan to sit like a nun all your life. By the way, any news from your ex? Alexa shook her head. She didn't know whether to rejoice or cry that Russell finally disappeared. Deep down, Alexa felt sadness, but her father seemed satisfied. I always said that this guy was not right for you. He said during dinner, you're smart, intelligent, and he's just strange. The fact that Alexa communicated with Mason more than other students was accidental. Somehow, he always ended up being late and sat on the first desk. The one where Alexa was sitting. I think you're lying about the transfer. A girl once remarked. Why is that? No one transferred you. You were expelled for being late. Mason laughed as if she had told a joke. Alexa added. I'm serious. You can't be so irresponsible. You're right. Mason agreed. But when you give your father shots every morning, there's not enough time for everything. Alexa was embarrassed. Growing up in an affluent family where they had a visiting nurse, housekeeper, and governess as needed, she couldn't comprehend all of this. Sorry, she said. I didn't think. Okay, don't apologize. No one thinks. Who needs other people's problems? To me, Alexa almost said, but stopped in time. However, it was true. As always, she fell for it, went along with pity and got involved in Mason's story. Alexa and the guy used to communicate as friends, but one day everything changed. When Mason didn't show up at the university, Alexa thought he was just running late. However, when the second class started and the chair next to her remained empty, she got worried. She went out into the corridor and started calling him. He didn't answer immediately. Hello. His voice was dull. How are you? She asked anxiously. Are you sick? No, I'm healthy. Why didn't you come to class? Something with your father. Mason remained silent for a long time. Alexa understood everything. Really? Dad passed away last night. Alexa, I'm not in the mood for classes right now. I don't know what to do. I'll come to you right away. Alexa said. Give me the address. Why? No need. Alexa. I'll manage. Alexa herself didn't know what she was going to do and how she could help. She just understood that she couldn't leave her friend in trouble. In the end, her father found an agent who took care of all the funeral arrangements. At first, he quietly swore and said that his daughter found another loser. But after talking to Mason a couple of times, he quieted down. Perhaps Mr. Helson saw something noble in Mason's face. Be that as it may, he didn't object to his daughter's communication with him. They helped Mason with the funeral 
and it seemed like his life should go back to normal. However, one day, he complained to Alexa that he was afraid to spend the night alone at home. They say that until a certain time, the soul roams around the apartment and all that, he told her. Maybe it's nonsense, but yesterday it seemed to me that the dishes in the kitchen were clinking. Seemed, Alexa said, though without confidence. Strangely enough, a 20-year-old guy who was afraid to spend the night alone gained sympathy from Alexa. Mason remained alone not only in that apartment, but in the whole world. If you want, you can live with us for a while, Alexa offered. The guest room is always available. It's awkward somehow. Mason hesitated. And what will your father say? Her father supported her daughter's proposal. He sympathized with Mason. Alexa couldn't confidently say that she loved Mason. Yes, she got used to him. Mason turned out to be a good friend and came to help when needed. But could this feeling be called love? Most likely. No. Will you marry me? Mason asked putting on his formal suit and bringing a huge bouquet of red roses. I do. Alexa nodded. Something told her that the answer was wrong. However, it was already impossible to take back her response. Mason smiled at her with a joyful smile and nodded. Thank you. You'll see. We'll definitely be happy. Alexa doubted that. After Alexa told her story to her saviors, they hastily left. Russell said he had to go to work and Hugh didn't even bother to explain. Alexa suspected they just wanted to discuss what they heard among themselves. Their place was quickly taken by a caretaker. Alexa couldn't imagine that she would be very pleased with her arrival. Hello, Mrs. Gooding. She smiled. I didn't think you would come again. Why? Well, working in such a company is probably not pleasant. There are all sorts of oddities here. In these times, who isn't strange? Philosophically remarked the caregiver, I've got news to these two, especially to that doctor who treats the dead. Don't talk like that, Alexa requested. He examines me too, so it feels awkward. I'll write, won't do that. But tell me, what do you want to eat, drink, maybe read a newspaper? All of this sounded very much like the questions Alexa used to ask Mrs. Jones. I wonder how she is now, most likely. After so many years, she wasn't alive anymore. Asking Russell about it was awkward. Better not. Let's just chat. Alexa thought that if friends gossip behind her back, she has the right to do the same. Mrs. Gooding took a seat. Alexa wondered what to ask first. Mrs. Gooding, do you happen to know what's going on with Russell's grandmother now? Is she still alive? What grandmother? There was no grandmother here. Only he is live he for now, only he. So, Mrs. Jones is no longer alive. Alexa felt guilt and tightly gripped the blanket. She hadn't even said goodbye to her, although she had always been a kind friend. And who, in this case, was the traitor? Russell or Alexa herself? For now, what does that mean? Alexa asked. His fiance, Sue, lives in the city doesn't want to move here. They'll figure out where to live after they get married. For now, they live separately. Fiance. Alexa asked in confusion. And Russell told me that he. What did Russell say? That he's not married. And that's pure truth. Alexa didn't think about the fiance. How foolish. Mrs. Gooding looked at her and asked. And who is he to you? A friend or just a friend? Alexa said, we've known each other since school. Oh, I see. The caregiver smirked. If there was anything between us, it's long in the past. Alexa muttered, I don't care. You'll have to explain that to Sue if she comes here. She's the one who's the scoundrel. Why is she a scoundrel? Alexa asked, but the caregiver didn't have a chance to answer. The front door creaked and Mrs. Gooding said, oh, here she comes. Alexa looked at the girl. So, this is Russell's chosen one. Dark-haired, tall, with brightly painted lips. Has Russell's taste really deteriorated? Alexa thought, immediately scolding herself. Why do I even care? There was a pause in their conversation, 
and the guest remained silent too. Then she placed a hefty bag on the chair and asked discontentedly, What's going on here? Wish you a good day too, Mrs. Gooding said. Alexa didn't know what to say. Sue was staring right at her. Hello, Alexa finally said. Who are you? Sue rudely asked. And why are you lounging around here? Easy, easy, Mrs. Gooding said. She's sick, sick. So you're a doctor. Sue looked around the room, noticed the cups on the table and the teapot, then stared at Alexa's dress, hanging right there on the chair. Where did she come from? Russell found her somewhere, Mrs. Gooding said. Now he's taking care of her. Judging by the expression on the newcomer's face, she was ready to either scream or choke with anger. The woman looked at them and left the room, slamming the door. What will happen now? Mrs. Gooding said, shaking her head. I hope she'll dump our Russell. You hope? Why? Because that Sue is a witch. And what do you know about her? Alexa asked. What do I know? Everything. She lived nearby. Her mother worked as a cook in a diner at the station. No one knew her father and Sue always had an attitude. When she moved to the city, she became even more stuck up. And what did Russell find in her? Alexa muttered, that's the question. Mrs. Gooding agreed. But now he found you, and everything can change, right? Oh, come on. Alexa mumbled. However, these words somehow lightened Alexa's mood. Mrs. Gooding had long gone, but Russell still hadn't arrived. Is it normal to be so late? Or is he apologizing to Sue? At times, Alexa dozed off, but she would jolt awake, fearing to miss Russell's arrival. He came in the twilight. Weary, he sat down and looked at Alexa. Hey, how was your day? Are you asking me that? She nervously asked. Who else? We're the only ones here. Fine, Alexa said, except for the fact that your fiancé was here. I think you already know about that. I know. Russell sighed. She called. Did you colic scrap metal at the landfill for her sake? I wanted to have a more luxurious wedding and save something for an apartment in the city. I have savings, but it's not enough. Although I wouldn't say that the landfill made me rich. Why didn't you say anything about Sue? There wasn't a reason. I, for example, told everything about Mason. Alexa said. I would have told you about Sue too if she had tried to kill me. Very funny. Okay, I'll tell you. I didn't want to mention her so that a third wheel wouldn't appear in our conversations. And what does that mean? Alexa asked. Russell didn't answer. Then added thoughtfully. Although a third one appeared a long time ago. Your husband. Maybe then we should count the girl you cheated on me with. What girl? Russell asked. Oh, I get it. You're remembering some mythical cheating you made up years ago. By the way, I never understood what that was all about. You don't have to deny it. I saw a photo of you kissing. Then show it to me. I can't. It's at home. Before Russell could respond, the door opened again, and Hugh walked in, very pleased, with a paper in his hand. I have news for you, he said. I don't know if it's good or bad but something is definitely happening. Hugh handed a sheet to his friend, and Alexa sat on the couch, asking, what's there? Orientation. Hugh replied, someone is looking for you. It says relatives and close ones. Russell uttered, it's Mason. Alexa muttered, looking anxiously out the window. For some reason, she felt that her husband would come here. The man she trusted, who eventually decided to kill her. Do you have any other relatives? Hugh inquired. No. My father passed away, and only Mason is left. Mrs. Jones died. Russell whispered softly. A couple of months after you left. I'm sorry. Alexa whispered. For what? You're not to blame for that. Maybe she was upset because of me. And she wasn't upset. I told her you went for an internship to another city. Why didn't you tell her the truth? What truth? That we broke up. Back then, I didn't want to believe it. Hoped you would come back. Alexa was silent. She continued to feel guilty and almost forgot about her husband. What should we do? Hugh asked, 
handing Alexa the flyer. She looked at her photo, one of the most unsuccessful ones where her hair was disheveled by the wind, and grimaced. He couldn't even choose a decent shot. Are you going to report it to the police or not? Hugh asked to bring her back home. And what has this guy gonna do to her? Russell asked. No, I won't do that. But you're not solving anything here. Hugh replied. She's not a child. She should decide everything herself. Right, Alexa. She was silent. Going back home was frightening. Staying here, especially after learning about Russell's fiancé, was impossible. I don't know, Alexa said. Can I think about it for a few days? At least, the men exchanged glances. Russell confidently said, Well, of course, stay as long as you need, until you feel better. Hugh added, But you can't stay here forever. You understand that? I understand. Alexa sighed. I won't stay. Don't worry. Russell wanted to say something else, but remained silent. A week later, Alexa felt much better. The headache hadn't completely gone away, but she could move around the house without the help of the caregiver. As she bid farewell to Mrs. Gooding for the last time, the caregiver winked. Good luck to you, to you too, Mrs. Gooding. Thank you for everything. Alexa felt silly putting on the evening dress again, but she had no other clothes. Are you going back? Russell asked. Alexa nodded. And what's next? Will you wait for your husband to finish you off? I will get a divorce. Russell pondered and began pacing around the room. Hugh, sitting nearby with a cup of tea, asked, why are we so concerned? We need to put this Mason in prison. And that's it. Easier said than done, Alexa said. How will I prove to the police that he attacked me? Interesting question. Russell, what do you think? Russell remained silent. Then Hugh shared his assumption. I think we should give this Mason a second chance. A second chance. Alexa objected. So, I should forgive him for everything and live happily ever after with him. Although I doubt it will be ever after after everything that happened. And happy as well. If him just come near. Russell added. I'll strangle him. I like your attitude. Hugh said. That's exactly what we need. Explain what you mean. Alexa demanded. I just mean that Mason should make another attempt. Not in the sense of trying to become a faithful and loving husband, but trying to kill you. Russell looked at him as if unsure whether his friend was joking or being serious, then said, I'll kill you myself for such ideas. Let me finish. Hugh waved his hands. We need to set a trap for our Mason. Give him a chance to fulfill his dream of becoming a murderer. And when he falls into it, we catch him and what if it doesn't work and Alexa gets hurt? Did you think about that? Russell asked. It should work. You just wanted to strangle him yourself a moment ago. You'll tie him up and turn him over to the police. Are you suggesting creating conditions where Mason can conveniently attack, orchestrating the perfect moment? Alexa asked. Exactly. We need to create a situation where the murderer would feel like a fool if he doesn't take the chance. I think he was already a fool back at the party. Alexa sighed. Attacking me in the garden when there were plenty of people in the house nearby. Maybe your husband was sure someone would confirm his alibi. You said there were many friends at the party. Mason could have confided in someone and asked for help. Russell suggested. Then his friends are even dimmer than he is. Hugh said, getting involved in such a thing. Would you cover for me if I asked you to deal with a corpse? Hardly. Unlike you, I didn't study to be a forensic pathologist. Alexa unexpectedly burst into laughter as she looked at them. I never thought I would say this, but I don't want to go home. Honestly, I've got news to this place. To you. Yes, Hugh. To you too, even though you're quite a bore. I'm deeply flattered. Hugh smirked. So, stay, Russell said. Alexa looked at him, not sure if he was joking or serious. Unfortunately, it's impossible. You have Sue. Let's finish this business and figure out what to do. Right now, the most important thing is to get rid of this maniac, Hugh said. Deep down, Alexa didn't agree with him. Suddenly, 
she realized that she might be seeing all of this for the last time. The old house clittered with miscellaneous items, the table, and these people who cared for her, sitting by her side at night. Mason, against this backdrop, seemed not like a person but a pitiful imitation, and her luxurious home felt empty and cold, just like her entire life. Afraid of bursting into tears, Alexa waved at them and worked out the door. Russell shouted after her, Call me when you're home. Home. Alexa felt like she was leaving her native nest rather than returning after a long absence. She decided to take a taxi to the city. Although Russell offered to drive her on the way, she thought, it's a pity they haven't invented a time machine yet. How I wish to go back in time and make the right choice. To make sure I don't have both Mason and this Sue in my life. Alexa got out of the taxi near her house and watched it drive away for a while. Pressing the doorbell, she felt confident and empowered for the first time in a long while. She was ready for whatever fate had in store for her and had no intention of losing. Alexa, is that you? Where have you been all this time? I've been looking for you everywhere. Mason appeared disheveled, as if he had just gotten out of bed. She was unpleasantly surprised to find her husband at home. Alexa expected the maid to open the door so she could inquire about everything from the housekeeper and find out what happened during her absence, even though that reason wasn't genuine. In reality, Alexa just didn't want to see her husband. She was delaying the moment of their reunion, unaware of it herself. Why are you home? She asked, why am I home? Alexa, is that all you want to ask? Seriously? Mason sounded hurt, even though their relationship was cold. He clearly didn't expect this. I mean, why aren't you at work? Alexa said, usually, you're already in the office at this time. Today is Sunday, her husband said, looking at her strangely. Alexa felt embarrassed. The conversation was unfolding strangely, not as she had planned. Where have you been? Mason asked. I contacted the police, called all the hospitals and morgues. Something terrible happened to me. Look, Alexa said, turning her back to him and pointing to her head. Right here. She waited for a couple of moments and turned around, wanting to see the impression her wound had on her husband. Apparently, it was strong because his face changed, becoming very pale, as if he saw a ghost. Alexa thought. And in a way, it's true. Mason actually thought I was dead. Most likely, he himself took me to the landfill. Maybe friends helped him. What is this? Mason asked with a trembling voice. Alexa, who did this? Where have you been? I don't know who did it. Good people helped me. They found me somewhere on the street, brought me home, and care about me. Good people. What about me? Why didn't you let me know where you were? I didn't have my phone, and I don't remember your number by heart. Alexa, that's not an explanation, Mason said. Can you imagine what I've been through during this time? You could have called the office. The number is always available. Send someone to our home, at least. I'm sorry, Alexa said. I felt very unwell. Couldn't think straight. Forgive me, Mason sighed. I overreacted. I was just so worried. You can't even imagine. Of course, he was worried, Alexa thought. Probably every day, he expected the police to knock on his door. Slept poorly. Conscience always bothers criminals. Mason embraced her shoulders and led her into the house. Clara. He shouted upon entering the hall. Put the kettle on quickly. The lady of the house is back. The housekeeper peeked out from the kitchen, gasped, and immediately disappeared. The word lady of the house made Alexa shudder, especially with the condescending tone it was uttered. Once, many years ago, Mason entered here as a humble guy, shy under the scrutinizing guise of her father. How things had changed. Make yourself comfortable, Mason said, guiding her to the sofa. Or perhaps you'd like to lie down. Shall I take you to the room? I'll manage on my own. Don't worry. I am a bit tired though. You go ahead and have breakfast. Alexa quickened her pace, 
eager to escape from her husband. She entered her room, closed the door, and breathed a sigh of relief. She was safe, at least for now. On the nightstand lay a phone. Someone had left it here. Alexa vaguely remembered not taking it with her, leaving it in a drawer of the table there, in the country house. She picked it up and was surprised to find it charged. Was Mason waiting for a call on her number? Or was the maniac rummaging through her photos? Alexa dialed Russell's number. She had memorized it just in case. Hello, it's me. She whispered into the receiver. I'm home. And for now, everything is fine. Everything will be fine. I promise. Russell replied in a whisper. Why are you whispering too? Alexa chuckled. Who's going to eavesdrop on you? She asked and regretted it because Sue could be next to Russell. I'm taking a cue from you. He replied. How's Mason doing? Probably turned gray from sorrow. I haven't noticed any gray hair. But he portrayed someone heartbroken skillfully. Even I would have believed it. He's a good actor. You know. Hugh was right. Russell said. I really could lose control. We need to be more careful. I wouldn't want to end up in jail because of some scumbag. Alexa remained silent. Unsure of what to say. Russell continued. I'll go crazy not knowing what happened to you. What if he puts something in your food? I'll pretend to have a poor appetite. Alexa said. Hugh and I came up with something. Russell said. Well, about how to make your husband reveal his true colors. And what's that? Alexa asked. You have to arrange another out of town celebration. But this time, a purely family one. Just you and him. No guests. I find even the thought of it repulsive. Alexa said. Pretending to be a loving couple when both Mason and I know it's not true. I can imagine. Russell muttered. You can't. You're not familiar with my husband. But I've heard enough. That'll do. Pretend to be scared by the previous attack. Say you want to spend a few days away from the city. And, most importantly, no one should know about it. But why? What's the point in that? If your husband thinks that no one knows about your weekend together, he might relax and try to attack you again. I saw this place on the map. There are few houses around. No witnesses. Well, okay, I agree. Where will you be? Alexa sighed. Hugh and I, Russell said, will be nearby. We'll survey the area in advance. Figure out the best way to keep an eye on you. I'm scared. Alexa admitted. Now, just imagining those places, it's frightening even to go there. Everything will be fine. Trust me. And Alexa believed. After all, if she couldn't trust him, there would be no one left in the world she could rely on. Jasmine came closer to lunchtime on the same day. I was in such a hurry to see you that I ran away from work. She told Alexa. And you disappeared first. Goodness knows where. And now you've shown up without even letting anyone know. What's going on? I can't understand. Jasmine pecked Alexa on the cheek and stepped back. Alexa looked at her friend with slight surprise, not fully recognizing the person in front of her. Jasmine had dyed her hair red, got a bob haircut, and even applied makeup differently. In just a few days of not seeing each other, there were such changes in appearance. So, you're doing eyeliner now? Alexa asked. Yes. And I bought different perfume. Can you smell it? Treated myself with my paycheck. Well, spill it. Where were you? What did you see? At first, Alexa wanted to tell Jasmine about the encounter with Russell, her husband's betrayal, and everything else. But she changed her mind now. Jasmine looked too radiant and cheerful to involve her in family troubles. It's a long story. You better see for yourself, Alexa said tilting her head to reveal the healed wound on her head. Goodness, Jasmine exclaimed. Who did this to you? I don't know. It happened at the party. That's where we last saw each other. Yeah, right, Jasmine said. Sorry for leaving you back then. The champagne was so delicious. If it weren't for me, the person who did this could have attacked you too, Alexa said. So don't blame yourself. What kind of bodyguard are you still? 
Jasmine sighed and changed the subject. Who saved you? Can I shake hands with these heroes? It's probably better not to, Alexa said. I've already become a burden to them. I'll send them a money transfer. Let them treat themselves, okay? Jasmine said. I won't bother you then. Let's talk about something light. I ran into Zoe the other day. Remember our classmate? Imagine, she's so chubby now, pushing a double stroller. I would never have thought. Alexa pretended to listen, nodded, but her mind was elsewhere. She was thinking about Russell and imagining that he was probably doing the same about her. She only went downstairs for dinner. Then, seeing her husband at the table, she suddenly wondered why this man was sitting in the place her father used to occupy. Were her father and Mason equals? Alexa's father had earned everything through hard work, built the house, raised his daughter alone. And what had Mason done? Found a wealthy bride. Did he ever love her? Alexa sat down at the table and smiled. Mason looked at her questioningly. Well, did you have a good rest? Feeling better? You know, I think we should still call a doctor. Let him check if everything is okay with you. I don't need a doctor, Alexa said. Then who? Mason asked. You know, in the place where I was all this time, there was such chaos, nice people, but annoying. The wife constantly quarreled with the husband. Kids were screaming. How did you endure it? Mason asked. What else could I do? But it doesn't matter now. I'm grateful to those people and I don't blame them for anything. But that endless noise, you know, I got so tired. I think you should still see a doctor. I've never heard such things from you before. Let's relax outside the city, Alexa said. Just you and me, no guests or servants. Complete silence. Mason looked at his wife with a puzzled expression, then asked cautiously, outside the city, where? At our house, meaning where everything happened and you're not afraid. Alexa looked at her husband, but she saw a completely different person. The guy Mason used to be, afraid of ghosts, scared of random noises, and this man had turned to murder. For the first time, Alexa doubted her version. Do I really have anything to fear? She asked. After all, you'll be with me if that's what you really want. Let's go next weekend, Mason replied and we won't tell anyone about it. Alexa said, turn off our phones, disappear off all radars. A real escape from civilization. You know, romantic, Mason chuckled. I don't remember you liking anything like that before. People change, and after what happened to me, I want to live with new strength, not miss a single moment. You understand, Alexa said, and preferably in those moments, there won't be you, she thought. But, of course, she didn't say it out loud. Alexa had almost forgotten what it was like to relax with her husband, and now simultaneously anticipated the imminent resolution and feared it. What if Mason attacked, and Russell and his friend didn't come to help in time? Or what if her husband really poisoned the food? Or maybe nothing would happen at all. And she, like a fool, would arrange a romantic dinner for Mason. They would politely smile at each other, and that would be the end of it. Perhaps it was better to forget about the attack, file for divorce, and erase this story from her memory like a bad dream. The villain must be punished. Hugh said when Alexa expressed this thought over the phone, you'll regret it yourself. You'll walk the streets with caution. Fearing he might attack from around the corner, Russell added, Alexa had nothing else to do but agree with them. There was no turning back. She had to put an end to this story and find out from Mason why he did what he did. Saturday morning turned out to be rainy. The rain drizzled and Mason, looking thoughtfully out the window, asked, are you sure you want this? Maybe we should postpone our trip to another time. Absolutely. I checked the weather. The sun should come out after lunch. Alexa said. In reality, Alexa was lying. They couldn't afford their plan to fall apart. Mason pursed his lips disapprovingly and went to load things into the car. They got into the car and Mason turned on the radio. 
Then he glanced at his wife and sighed. Sorry, I'll turn it off now. Forgot you can't stand it. It's okay. Leave it. Alexa requested. I like this song. Not that she really needed music, but it was easier to stay silent. Staring out the window, sitting in complete silence would have been uncomfortable. Yet, Mason seemed uneasy, probably because he occasionally asked questions. Do you feel okay? No headache. Everything is fine. I took some pills just in case. You don't need to worry. At work, everyone was asking about you. Do you really not want to call someone from there? Accountants seem to be the most concerned. You would make their day, maybe later, Alexa said. And let's not talk about accountants today. For these two days, it's just you and me in the whole world. Haven't you forgotten? Oh, yeah, I remember, mumbled Mason. Alexa found it amusing how determined Mason was to keep the conversation going. Apparently, driving in complete silence was truly torturous for him. The village they arrived at looked almost uninhabited. Alexa used to like this place, but now it seemed eerie. It truly was a good location for various crimes. Mason parked the car in front of the house and awkwardly offered his hand to help his wife get out. What should we do? Mason asked. Aren't you tired? Maybe you want to lie down. No, thanks. Everything is fine. I'll unpack the bags. And are you hungry? Dear, at the word dear, Mason jerked as if shocked. Alexa had never called him that before. No, thanks. I'll go check the rooms. Maybe we need to air them out. It was evident that her husband was looking for any excuse to get away from her. Alexa nodded. Sure, go ahead. Mason went upstairs. Alexa waited for a moment, sneaked up the stairs, and eavesdropped. It seemed her husband was talking to someone on the phone, probably a lover or maybe making arrangements with friends regarding an alibi. Alexa once again found herself eavesdropping. She went back to the kitchen and picked up her phone as well. Hello, where are you? She whispered into the phone. In your garden, there are a lot of bushes here. Did you deliberately plant them to keep thieves unnoticed? Russell asked. No, it's for you to sit in ambush, Alexa said. Mason is talking on the phone. I don't know with whom and about what, but I think it's about me. Soon, they'll be talking about him, Russell promised. All the country's TV channels, they love stories about husbands getting rid of their wives for the inheritance. The coverage will be incredible. The main thing is that I see him. I don't want them to show my black and white photo in the broadcast. You'll see. Hugh and I won't let you down. Thank you. Thank him for me. Alexa asked. I don't know why he got involved in this story, but I'm really grateful to him. He just loves adventures. Can't live without them. Wait, he'll probably tell you how he got the scar on his face. Granted, his story will likely have more fiction, but it won't hurt. Footsteps echoed on the stairs behind Alexa. She flinched and whispered into the phone. Mason is coming. Kisses. We'll talk later. She hid the phone in her pocket and blushed, realizing that she had just said kisses. How would Russell, who was almost married, interpret this phrase? Mason appeared in the kitchen, looking grumpy. Seeing his wife looking at him, Mason put on a smile. Did you miss me? Who were you talking to? Work was calling. Alexa replied. I asked you to turn off the phone, but I forgot. But they won't bother us anymore. And who were you talking to? I think I heard a voice. A friend called. Wanted to invite me fishing. But I said I'm busy today. We are busy. Mason said, smiling even wider. They fell silent. Looking at each other. Alexa realized she didn't know what leisure activity to suggest to her husband. The rain continued to drizzle outside. Alexa decided that such weather was suitable for watching a movie. Maybe we'll find an interesting movie, she suggested, turning on the TV. Okay, Mason nodded. But why he in the kitchen? Our room has a larger screen, and lying in bed is much more pleasant. The husband's suggestion made Alexa uncomfortable. She was afraid that he might have planned to commit the murder in the bedroom. No, better he, 
she said. We can heat tea whenever we want, and the fridge is nearby. Mason looked at her as if she were foolish, but didn't say anything, shrugged, and sat on a chair. Okay, as you wish. Never before had watching a comedy caused such discomfort for Alexa. Mason also looked tense. It seemed like he couldn't wait to escape from there. As soon as the final credits rolled, Alexa stood up and told her husband that she would take a short work in the garden to get some fresh air. In the garden. After what happened last time, Mason was astonished. Well, there's no maniac hiding behind every corner here. Maybe I should accompany you. Mason got up from his chair. Or let's just open the window. I'll just take a look for about 10 minutes to see what has changed since I've been away. Have the flowers I planted bloomed? Alexa felt like she was talking nonsense. Surely, her husband must think she had become mentally disturbed after the attack. Let him think what he wants. Alexa went into the garden and breathed in the cool air. It really felt lighter on her soul. She looked towards the bushes and smiled, imagining that her friends were somewhere there. Alexa strolled along the path at a leisurely pace. Come on, Mason, do it. She thought, finally, show your true colors. Alexa stepped off the path and ventured into the shade of the trees. She was expecting an attack from behind, but it still turned out to be too unexpected. Alexa recoiled to the side, feeling some movement, and immediately heard a scream. Let go. Let me go. How dare you? The voice was very familiar, but it didn't belong to Mason. Jasmine. Alexa turned around saw her friend, and was left speechless. Jasmine looked as usual, and at the same time, she seemed completely unrecognizable. Dark pants and a shirt, hair pulled back in a ponytail, almost no makeup on her face, twisted in anger. She was desperately trying to break free in Alexa's direction, but Russell was holding her tightly. Strong one, he said. It takes a whole squad to hold her back. What's going on? Alex asked. Chasmin, how did you get here? The answer came from Hugh. He carefully circled her from the side, kicked a stick out of the way, and she was the killer. This beauty wanted to kill you, not the husband. Judging by the expression on your face, you know her well. Who is she? Her friend, Russell replied. I remembered her. She used to follow Alexa around. Jasmine was trying to break free. Stop wriggling. Hugh said. I captured it all. What did you capture? Alexa asked. Her attack. She was also lurking for you here. Just under the trees. That's why we didn't notice her right away. Everyone was watching the house. Waiting for your husband. And then, out of nowhere, she appeared from the bushes. I immediately turned on the camera and Russell was right behind her. We barely made it. What happened was not making sense in Alexa's head. She trembled with horror. Russell hugged her and whispered, forgive me, please. I almost came late. I can't believe it. Alexa said, Jasmine, why did you do this? What do you hate me for? Jasmine cast a furious glance at her and asked, and what is there to love about you? We were always best friends helping each other. Alexa replied. Jasmine burst into laughter. Friends, helping. A rich girl befriending a school outcast. When did that ever happen? You just like feeling good. Like that I owed you. That I followed you around like a dog. I never thought that way. I truly loved you almost like a sister. The cruel expression didn't disappear from Jasmine's guise. Fine. Let it be. You didn't believe in our friendship, but to kill me, for what? You could have just cut ties with me. Stop communicating, Alexa said. Why did I want to kill you? Jasmine asked again. Because you've been enjoying life for too long, it's time to make room for someone else. Don't you think so? I don't understand, Alexa whispered. Well, I think I understand, Russell said. Look. He comes your husband. He'll explain everything now. Mason was indeed running towards them, looking frightened. Alexa, Jasmine, what's happening? Who are these people? Jasmine asked. You said you would be alone here. 
Who are these guys? Mason looked at the unfamiliar men with amazement. You asked Alexa, he said. Now do you understand? Alexa, to be honest, not entirely. This redhead is your husband's mistress. He didn't tell anyone about your little vacation except her. And together they decided to kill you. What are you talking about? Mason objected. I didn't plan to kill anyone. Especially not my Alexa. Didn't plan or didn't succeed last time. Russell asked. What other time? Are you talking about the holiday? Some maniac attacked. What does it have to do with me? Alexa couldn't take her eyes off her husband. He wasn't lying. There was no doubt about that. Alexa could always sense the lie of fame. But if he wasn't the killer, then, Jasmine, was it also you last time? Alexa asked. Guess from three tries. But why? It wasn't fair that everything came to you alone. This house, then a great guy, and I struggled for everything in my life. First, I grew up in poverty, watching the parties my mother threw with prospective suitors, then worked as a waitress after school. While you hung out with this, Jasmine threw a spiteful glance at Russell. Now, I'm working as a secretary, and you live in luxury. So, since your husband and I love each other, why shouldn't I take everything else? Took Mason, we'll take the house, but first, I needed to get rid of you. Alexa looked at her and couldn't find words. Then she buried her face in Russell's shoulder and asked, Take me away from here. I can't look at them. Russell nodded and led her back to the house. Hugh shouted after them, Don't forget to call the police. Mason ran alongside Alexa, repeating the same thing. We almost had nothing. Don't believe her. Met a couple of times. Just a fling. She's making it all up. Alexa, can't you see? Russell showed him a fist, and Mason stepped back, muttering something like, forgive me. Russell sat Alexa on a chair, handed her a glass of water, and started calling the police. They'll be here soon. Are you feeling okay? If you and Hugh hadn't arrived in time, I would have felt much worse. But now I'm okay. Almost. The police arrived quickly. Alexa answered some questions, then promised to come to the station the next day. When everyone left, it was already late evening. Hugh had also disappeared into the evening twilight, leaving the friends alone. They sat on a small couch and looked out the window. Alexa rested her head on Russell's shoulder and whispered, It's hard to believe that everything turned out this way. That for many years, I lived amidst lies, without a friend without a husband. The main thing is that it's over, Russell said. Something new will form somehow. What will form now? My life is in ruins. And you weren't there. But it's my fault. Before, you said it was my fault. How did I betray you? Maybe you'll tell me about that photograph. Okay, I'll show you now. Alexa took her phone and showed Russell the photo. See? I keep this picture on my phone, revisiting it from time to time, like a masochist. Do you recognize who's in it? Russell looked stunned at the photo, then shook his head. Don't know the blonde, and the guy, it looks like me, and not me at the same time. I've never had such a shirt. Where did this photo come from? Jasmine showed it. She caught you together. Alexa fell silent. The terrible truth was reaching her too slowly. Was this photo also a forgery? Did Jasmine deliberately give it to me to create a rift between us? Russell remained silent, slightly zoomed in on the photo, then pointed to something with his finger. Look, there's even a scene between the collar and my head. Photoshop, and not a very good one. I believed her, Alexa whispered, tossing the phone aside. I believed her, not you. How foolish I was. Forget it. I was foolish too. Instead of demanding an explanation from you, I gave up and tried to forget. But I couldn't forget. Judging by what you knew about my husband's name, they wrote about your wedding in the local newspaper. Russell replied embarrassed. I accidentally came across it. Got drunk that day. Then I got a reprimand at work. Alexa sighed and wiped away tears. It's a pity that the truth has come out too late. 
Now nothing can be fixed. Why not? You marry Sue. And I. By the way, when is your wedding? I'll drink on that day too. No one will dare to reprimand me. I'll declare a day off at work myself. There won't be any wedding. Russell waved his hand. How can there be no wedding? I cancelled it. Sue argued a bit, but soon gave in. Realizing that I'm quite the cheater. Picking up ladies at the dump. Alexa looked at him skeptically. And Russell added. Although, if you insist, we can still have the wedding. No, I'm not insisting. Marry me. Russell handed her a makeshift ring made from a straw. Sorry. I don't have anything better at the moment. Alexa smiled and put the straw ring on her finger. And I don't need anything better. The main thing is that you're here.